Okay, we're going to open the, uh, the he public hearing. Um, and uh, we're opening at 6.12. And I'll read the, ag the, read the agenda. Uh, we're going to have a public hearing to discuss to amend zoning bylaws to prohibit, prohibit all types of marijuana establishments within the town of Deerfield, with the exception of the medical marijuana treatment centers. Number two is to discuss a proposal to amend zoning bylaws to permit certain marijuana facilities and operations in accordance with applicable Massachusetts law. The full public hearing notices and the complete text of the proposed bylaws are available at the town hall. Next would be new business. The planning board will discuss possible changes to town bylaws regarding two family dwellings, dimensional requirements, storage standards, accessory apartments, drive through windows and signage. And then finally, any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours to the posting of this meeting. And we'll set the next, the date for the next meeting and then we will adjourn. Okay. So, um, I guess what we'll do is we'll start on the, um, on the first public hearing. And that is to discuss the amendment to prohibit all types of marijuana establishments within the town. Um, Adam, do you want to speak to that first? Sure. So thank you, members of the board. Uh, hello again. We've had uh, a few, a series of informational meetings, as you know, relative to uh, what the legislature is calling adult use or recreational marijuana. And as you just mentioned, there are a couple of proposals that are before you tonight for public hearing, uh, both of which are proposed to be on the upcoming town meeting warrant. Uh, one of these, and the one that you've asked me to address first, is something that I've entitled, and I believe you have uh, before you, and there may also be copies available for uh, others who are in attendance tonight, entitled Bylaw Amendments uh, and Accompanying Ballot Question. And we've got a proposed amendment to the uh, zoning bylaw that would result in an outright prohibition of all types of uh, adult use or recreational marijuana establishments. Uh, excluded from that list are medical marijuana establishments, which of course are already permitted pursuant to your bylaw. You made an amendment a number of years ago that allowed for those to be located within your, uh, what's currently referred to as your medical marijuana overlay district. So uh, this article consists of a uh, single section, essentially, that uh, makes a modification to your table of principal uses. It uh, makes reference specifically to a quote-unquote marijuana establishment, which is a defined term under the statute. And it indicates that these sorts of facilities are prohibited. And there is, in fact, a, a footnote that references Chapter 94G, which is the new chapter in Massachusetts General Laws that addresses adult use marijuana. Uh, it was a consequence of the November 2016 ballot initiative that was then modified by the legislature in mid-2017. And it says that all types of marijuana establishments are prohibited within the town of Deerfield. And then it goes on to state explicitly that that includes marijuana cultivators, marijuana testing facilities, marijuana project, product manufacturers, marijuana retailers, marijuana social consumption operations, and all other types of licensed marijuana-related businesses and then goes on to say, but expressly excluding medical marijuana treatment centers. Um, the last sentence is an important one. It's something I made you aware of when I've been before you the past three meetings, um, which is that the adoption of this sort of a bylaw in and of itself by town meeting, even with your recommendation, would not affect a prohibition. When the legislature uh, modified the statute in 2017, they provided for a two-part process in municipalities that voted to uh, support the legalization of recreational marijuana. And that two-part process, in order to prohibit it, prohibit it in your community or any single type in your community, begins with a prohibition bylaw of the sort that I just described, but then also requires that the question be placed on a ballot for the vote uh, of the residents. And only if the question is successful, the, the article is successful on the warrant at town meeting, and a majority vote is obtained uh, at the polls, would the prohibition then be effective. Uh, and that's what that last, last sentence references in the bylaw, where it says that the prohibition shall be effective only upon passage by the voters at a regular or special town election, 
So that would need to be the second part of the process. So here tonight, we're discussing the bylaw. We're discussing your recommendation with respect to that bylaw. That recommendation will be made known to the voters at town meeting. Town meeting will then vote to either accept or reject the warrant article. If they accept it, there's then a question of whether or not um, the, the voters would uh, accept that prohibition as well. And for that to happen, it would need to be placed on the ballot. That's a process that is within the control of the select board. Okay. That's all I have, but I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that you might have or members of the public might have uh, throughout the course of the night tonight. Okay. Um, and just to make clear that there's also a uh, set of bylaws that we have looked at that would um, allow it in the town and the, and the rules and regulations for that as well. But I think if anybody wants to speak to this, um, this is a public hearing, so people can uh, get up and come to a microphone and... Uh, Express your opinions. This is on the prohibition. This is on the prohibition, right? Um, I'm Carolyn Ness, Board of Selectmen and Board of Health. Um, I just like to say that um, it's kind of like the bus has left the station. I myself personally voted against legalizing marijuana because I felt, um, you know, we didn't have like a breatharizer kind of test to regulate um, marijuana but you know it was voted overwhelmingly in town and in um, the state and um, out of the 351 towns there are only 59 towns they're mostly on the east that prohibit it um, around us there is no one there is um, in western mass there's Williamstown um, Obviously, um, from what I understand, people just didn't want college kids an overabundance of shops in the town um, with the college there. And then Ludlow and um, East Long Meadow, and I don't know, and Wilbraham. I'm not really sure what the story is down there, but there is nobody around here. The rest are just prohibitions that will expire July 1st, the majority of them or December, and, it, and they're only there for uh, the moratorium to you know, provide more time for planning. We have made a real effort to um, roll this out very conservatively. You're using the same overlay district that we have for medical marijuana, and it just doesn't make sense for us to not use our biggest asset, which is our police department. John Pachorek is probably, well, I know he's probably the best um, police officer police chief in the county and if not in all of Western Mass but based on my um, being on the Western Mass Homeland Security Council and working with police um, uh, chiefs there and I have full faith that he can handle any security issues that um, come forward and we also have working for us Brian Ravish who has, is our resource officer and for the last couple of years, he has really, really done a great job building relationships with kids. And it's really important that our educational plan, which is part of the licensing process and the host agreement that, we're, that the select board oversees, um, be able to be implemented in our schools. And I, I feel very strongly that not using our assets, our best assets, is a, is a mistake. So I do not support this prohibition. I just wanted to, <laughs> yes, sorry I'm late. Um, so let's see. Document. Is there anybody is there, else while he's, while well, I was just, coming? is there anyone else that wants to speak to that point? Sorry. And if you could tell your name, that would be helpful. Yeah. Hi, I'm, can you hear me? I'm Lily Dwight. I'm at 45 South Mill River Road in South Deerfield. And I'm opposed to this amendment, and it's mostly a personal thing. I think it's kind of ridiculous. I think the town stated pretty clearly what we wanted. But also, every spring, my family and I walk up and down our road and pick up the beer bottles 
the liquor bottles, the cigarette packages, and the lottery tickets that are strewn along our roadside. Okay, personally, I find that a lot more disgusting than somebody smoking pot and eating pizza. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any I'm very shy, but I'm not going to be shy about my thought tonight. Sure. And what's your name, ma'am? Carol Crafts. I'm a resident. I live on 59 Mill Village Road. I am totally against this town having marijuana, selling it, raising it, having anything to do with, to do with it. P people say that it is not an addictive drug. It might not be for some people that do not have the propensity to become addicted, and other people do have the propensity to become addicted, and they go on to take stronger and more potent drugs, therefore ergo becoming an addict. I have listened on TV as much as I can to the meetings, and that's why I came tonight to thank you, Kip, for giving at least us the option to opt out of this plan. Um, I have nothing against the medical marijuana for people that are ill, and, it, and it, it does help a lot of people. There is a reason that it helps a lot of people, and the reason is because it is a drug. It's probably a safer drug than, than the hardcore stuff that people are taking and dying from. But I love this town. I just moved here not too long ago, and I hate to see it turn into something that could actually blow up in our faces. Um, I, I know there's a lot of people that are for this, but I just was wondering when this was voted on to have it, if the people realized all that it encompasses and involves. Um, also, how much... How much benefit are we going to get from the taxes that we draw in from this, the sales of this marijuana? Does anybody know? Does anybody have an idea after we pay all the other expenses that we might incur? I, I'm sure there are some people that have an idea, but I don't really know for sure. I don't. Because I think that was a big, one of the big reasons why people voted for it. They figured... It's, it's really hard for everybody. Taxes are going up and people's income isn't. And it's getting harder and harder for everyone. But I'm just wondering if anybody really looked into that because if we're not gonna get that big of an in, income from it, uh, you know, all the, if the other towns around us are all gonna have it and, and, and sell it, anybody that wants to can go to that town and buy it. It's not like that they're not gonna be able to get it. And I'm also thinking how much, how many people are going to be using marijuana when every single town is going to be having the places to sell it and grow it, and that's just my concern. And if I and if I hurt anybody's feelings by coming up here, I'm sorry, but that's just the way I feel. I hate to see Deerfield turn to that. Um, there's got to be other ways that we can re raise revenue besides turning to, to growing and selling marijuana. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll speak. My name is Trevor McDaniel, Board of Selectmen, Board of uh, Health. And, and I'm so glad you came up to speak. I really appreciate you voicing your opinion. And, um, so uh, I, I'm speaking in favor. Um, and the reason I'm speaking in favor is because we already are going to incur those costs. Um, the costs are going to be here no matter if we pass it or not. And so my feeling is uh, if we can get whatever revenue from it so we can fund our police department and educate our kids about the dangers um, and, and, uh, and, and work with a host agreement to bring some education dollars into our schools to work with our, um, with our, social, uh, with our social workers, um, guidance counselors at, at school and the, and, and the nurses and our school resource officer to, um, to start to, um, uh, and, and with our police department, to start addressing some of the costs that are already going to be here to begin with. And to ignore that that's not going to happen, that we aren't going to have costs already uh, incurred and have no source of revenue and no control over the education of our kids or monetary um, help to educate our kids um, 
It, it just, um, we, we blind to that fact. It's, it's Trevor, already Trevor, here. And just so I can clarify, you're, you're not in support of the prohibition, but you're correct. in support of the next one that we're going to talk That's about. That's correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Bruce? I do not agree with allowing the recreational portion of the uh, marijuana in the town. Uh, I guess I know everybody's got tax in their mind and other possible benefit, but I guess I just don't understand the policy of this town when the Board of Health has passed regulations that basically bans even the sale of tobacco uh, over a long period of time, and yet you're going to turn around and allow marijuana as a smoking base as well. It seems kind of contradictory on, uh, on, uh, uh, in the overall scheme of things. And uh, I, so therefore, on that grounds, we also already have too many, quote, impaired drivers. Um, we don't need another group of impaired drivers. There's enough of it is. We have all sorts of laws for alcohol, guns, uh, drugs, and everything else. Laws don't do a lot of good. Okay, they protect the innocent people to a certain degree. Uh, but I'm more concerned with another layer of impaired drivers out on the road. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Come on up, sir. Hi, I'm Dick Evans. Uh, just a question. Uh, has the board determined what the costs to the town are likely to be by accommodating a regulated licensed marijuana uh, in town? And uh, have, has the board determined what the actual threats to the public health and safety and the character of the community are to, uh, what those threats are to the community? And, and if so, could you tell us? I don't believe the town has assessed the cost of what it would you know, be to the town. Right. But maybe Thank you, you. want to, maybe you also want to speak to uh, Mrs. Kraft's um, question on what what is the town benefit from it? Oh well, we could lots What's of things. Money money wise, she was asking, and you may have some of the answers. If you don't, somebody else might. Oh, certainly. Uh, uh, I would start with the revenue, but I, I would also point out the other benefits of, of legalization that other communities have enjoyed. Property values have gone up. Uh, in some in some cities, opioid dis dependence has gone down. Uh, you can you can you know do a Google search and, and find the benefits of legalization in those cities and towns in Colorado and Oregon, um, and it's not too hard to find. But I'm, I think it's premature to make a decision before you've examined what those benefits actually are and also identified what those costs are. I think she raised an excellent point. She said, we've got to determine that the benefits exceed the cost. Well, what are the costs? No one seems to have looked to ask, ask that Youth question. Youth addiction. Sorry? Youth addiction. Well, I'm talking about the, the financial cost. Uh, and, and, and the financial and, costs, to me, are minimal versus the human cost. Well, <laughs> uh, I don't think, I don't think if, uh, you will find that that has been a cost in any community that has legalized marijuana. I, I've studied it pretty closely. I've never seen well, that, the, that listed. It's, the data that I'm seeing coming out of Washington and Colorado are not what you say. So. Well, well, I, guess I, I uh, two sides to each coin, right? Uh, perhaps, perhaps. But uh, I, I think that before you, before you uh, pass a prohibition, you ought to identify the actual, the, the, the real threats, not just the vague ones, you know. Every, lots, of, lots of people don't like marijuana, but we litigated that in November of 16. You know, we had an election and 56 or so percent of this community said yes to legalization. I think that's, they, the, the community has made the decision then. Now the, come, the, the question comes down to uh, the planning board to do some planning and to ascertain what the costs are, ascertain what the risks are, and to make a recommendation to the community. And you, you haven't done that yet. Because of that, I think it's a little premature to move forward with this uh, measure. Thanks. Thank you. But just to clarify something, the planning board is not making a decision whether or not it's going to happen or not. We're just going over the bylaws that are going to be put in place to uh, regulate it if it does go in. Yes. Uh, the other question that was first was whether there'd be a moratorium. The planning board is not also going to make that decision. We're just saying that the people of our community should make that decision. 
I understand, that's, but you're making a decision as to what to recommend to the selectmen and then to uh, make uh, for, for a board article, it's aren't not, you? We're yes. not, this board's not making that decision. We're just recommending or – You're making, deciding what to recommend. We're deciding that, you know, if these bylaws go forward, let the people make the choice. A lot of information has changed over the last two years. And, you know, some people are still for it, some people are against it, and, you know, I, at least I'm neutral on this board. I just want to make sure everybody's informed and let the people make the decision. Uh, if, it, if it's great, it's great. If it's bad, it's bad. And I think that if any board makes a decision for the community and it gets bad, it's on that board. But if the people make a decision and it goes bad, well, it's on the whole community. But that's why I have a board, doesn't it? Yep. We have a board to do some planning. Yep. That's your job. That's right. 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 And that's what we're doing. You. Thank you. Or anyone else? Kip, I was I, just here hearing you speak. Uh, I don't think we have a moratorium option here at all. We're just either <coughs> prohibiting or allowing. I don't think we've got a moratorium um, uh, vote. So well, I just prohibition. Just, right. yeah, prohibition. just prohibition. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My name is Mark Fallone, 103 South Mill River Road. Um, the last time I was at the planning board meeting, I don't know if I missed something, but I thought everything was about the zoning for cultivation. And it seemed that everybody was widely in favor of um, changing the zoning so that the RA district would allow for cultivation, outdoor cultivation. And did I miss? I just wondered if well, I missed something. Not as know. widely yeah. as you might think. Yeah. What's that? Not as widely as you might imagine. At the, oh, at okay. The, so, so at what's one of happening the meetings, now? Mark, what's at, that? At one of the meetings, the board voted to have options to put onto the. Thing. So one of them is prohibition, and one of them is to allow it and to regulate it. And so, so we're, we're dealing with two one. different things here. So, so we've started with the prohibition first, and then we'll go to the next one. What's and the next one? you're welcome to speak, that is to go with the zoning, which we've got set up to allow <coughs> marijuana recreational sales in the town of Deerfield. Okay, so, so that's what not that, related to this issue of the prohibition. And the um, prohibition no. is whether or not we're going to put it to vote? Is that what... Well, I believe maybe Adam could explain the process sure. better to, than, than I can, but. Uh. So I, I think what was said is correct. Um, we're, we're dealing with two separate bylaws that are before the planning board for recommendation tonight. We decided to take them in sort of reverse order from the manner in which we've been dealing with them at the informational meetings. What we're discussing now is the prohibition, and that's a simple bylaw that consists of a single paragraph within the zoning bylaw that will prohibit all marijuana establishments. Cultivation, retail, testing, manufacturing, all marijuana establishments would be prohibited in the town of Deerfield. That's option one. And the board will be asked to make a recommendation on that option for consideration by town meeting. It would need to be paired by a vote at the polls, which is something that the selectmen would need to, the select board would need to opt to put on the ballot. What we will discuss next, once we've concluded with public comment on this topic, is the second bylaw, the one that we've been working on for the better part of the past three meetings, which is a much lengthier bylaw, it's six or seven or eight pages now, that regulates marijuana, regulates cultivation, regulates sales, testing, manufacturing, provides for those uses in different districts, provides for a variety of uh, preconditions that would accompany each of those uses if they were to be allowed by the board. Thank you. Thank you. So in um, response, I think it was Carol, is that, is that your name, Carol? So in response to Carol's um, objection to having the widespread use of marijuana, particularly with use, which other people are bringing up, uh, John also brought up about youths using marijuana. So the use of marijuana and the legalization and illegalization of marijuana are certainly unknown and unproven. And I don't think, I know John said he had some, um, you said you had some, da some data? Did, well, did yeah, the, there's data that comes out of Colorado and Washington. And Has anybody brought any data? I, I have been sending it in to the um, planning board. Okay, so my, my thought on the thing, just from a legalization and voting for legalization or not legalizing it in general is that there is widespread use of marijuana in the whole entire country, and particularly in Massachusetts, and particularly in Deerfield, and I think everybody is aware of that. The act of bringing it to being legal as opposed to being illegal, the people that would want it to remain illegal 
would be drug dealers, gangsters. I mean, this is where they're going to get their revenue from. The people that would be most against legalization would be drug dealers and gangsters because they're, that will dry up their revenue. And we're proposing, or what the state is proposing is, that the town community would then benefit from what's happening anyway. People that are going to smoke marijuana are going to smoke marijuana. People that aren't going to smoke marijuana are not going to smoke marijuana. Making it legal or not, I think if anything, if you look at what's happened in Amsterdam, forget about Denver for right now. In Amsterdam, if the up-and-coming people, you go to a coffee shop there, they're not smoking marijuana. Making it legal doesn't make it more acceptable. It does not necessarily make it more acceptable, especially in the long term. And if we can do what would be a good proposal from the planning board or from the town, education, taking the money and putting the money and whatever this money is, a tax income, um, I would say would be able to approach a million dollars in this community. And could the town use an extra million dollars in tax revenue to educate about drug use, to help out with the things that... Um, the school, the playgrounds, um, other things that are going on in town, and that's really the issue about legalizing and not legalizing. Not about use, because people that are going to use it are going to use it. They're not going to not use it because it's illegal, and they're not going to use it because it's legal, in my opinion. Um, my, my understanding of what Adam has done is that we can't prohibit the use of it in the town but we can prohibit to have it sold in the town. And I think that's all this has to do with this, mm -hmm. is yeah. a prohibiting cultivation and sales of marijuana in Deerfield, but we can't go against the law. Oh, no, I was you just saying I mean? is that the, from Carol's, uh, Carol's opinion of it was that she really doesn't want it to be widespread and expand the use of it, where the issue of legally selling it, you're not going to get any revenue if this prohibition goes through. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Zero exactly. revenue versus yeah. revenue. And, and as far and as the, illegal the, dealing or legal dealing, I don't know about that because the, you know, what's happening in the community, as you said, the whole county. So or if I understand whatever. you correctly, you think the town could generate a million dollars in revenue from this? Yes, in long term. So that means their sales, the sales in this town alone would have to be $30 million? Correct. $35 million. Yeah. And nobody has said that it would be 3%, correct? Right, the state's I, looking at I one and a half percent. Talking about that, but I, and uh, when you're talking about revenue, you're talking about all revenue for the town. Well, there is, and you haven't revenues. discussed it yet with the people that want to propose this. So, yes, my opinion is you would be upwards of a million dollars in revenue for the town. Interesting. If you care about the town. I think that that's a good decision to do it, and the town has already voted. If you want, I mean, I'm a little unclear about. I, I, heard what um, Adam had said, but it, that the prohibition would then go to town meeting and then decide whether it gets put on the ballot for the fall. No, Is that it, correct? If it, yeah, if it passes town, town meeting, meeting, then it, has then to it go goes to, a to the ballot, ballot. And then the people of town have to vote. And so I'm not either for or against that, because if the town is against it, then the town's against it. But I thought the town already voted for it, so I'm wondering why they we're did. going that's, back that's and forth. That's why we have to take yeah, it to so a second I wonder ballot. why we're going back and forth on that. That's but, why it has to go to a second ballot, because the town did support it. Yeah. In, in oh, that's area. why it would have to go to the ballot, not just to the town meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, I am um, for the original vote that the town had and okay. against the um, prohibition. All right. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else like to speak to? Sure. Hi, Lily Dwight again. Um, I jumped online because I thought that was a really good question about the revenues and stuff, so maybe this will be helpful. Um, as of 2016 in Colorado, they, the marijuana taxes include a standard 2.9% sales tax plus a 10% special marijuana tax and a voter-approved 15% excise tax on wholesale marijuana transfers. And they, um, for 2015, they just, there's $996 million for the whole state of Colorado, <coughs> which when you divide it by the population of Colorado, which I thought might be more meaningful to us, is about $178 per resident in 
taxes that's raised through marijuana. Now, that might be different because in 2015, you know, Colorado was one of the few states that was doing it, so they probably had a lot of visitor taxes as well, but still, I thought that might be helpful information. Thank you. Is there anyone else that'd like to speak to that issue? I don't think the, the prohibition amendment is really a forward looking uh, concept and the town just you might as well get on board with what's going on and figure out how to benefit from this rather than just being this sort of isolated little uh, protest town or something but yeah are, there are a number of towns I've heard that do have a local sales tax or some other special thing that the town would directly benefit by that could be perhaps integrated into the plan so that there isn't a just a cost. So people just talk about, you know, monetary cost. Obviously your social costs issue is very debatable and seeing as how, let's say, from this location here at the town hall, I can go to a package store in about four different bars within like three hundred yards. I don't think there's any sort of case for talking about how the town's somehow uh, moral integrity is being impugned by this. So um, let's just move ahead. Thank you. Is there anyone else? No? Okay, do you want to let's move on to the discussion? Is it um, just for the marijuana bylaws? Yes. Adam, would you like to speak to this? So thank you again. Um, as I had mentioned when I spoke earlier, uh, is that we have a second document, and again, I believe there are copies for the public, that is entitled A Zoning Amendment for Marijuana Facilities and Operations. And we've spent the, the better part of our uh, lengthy three meetings, three informational meetings, talking um, not so much about the prohibition. Um, we knew that would be uh, an option. You said that early on, but talking about the much more complicated task of attempting to regulate marijuana. And so we've done that uh, in a few different ways through a series of amendments to your zoning bylaw. And I, I think what I'll do with your permission, Mr. Chairman, is I'll um, sure. sort of walk through what you've got for the benefit of those who might be in attendance tonight who weren't here for earlier sessions. I'm not going to go into the level of detail that we've gone into through our various meetings because you, you've all been here. Um, certainly if you've got questions or the public has questions, I'll be here to answer them. Um, and as I do that, I also want to make reference to a few modifications that I've made even since the version that was before you. So this would be number four, right? That's correct. Okay. And the real reason for that is you might recall when I was last before you three weeks ago, we were awaiting the finalization of the Cannabis Control Commission's regulations. Mm -hmm. Those regulations were released in draft form before the first of the year. There were a series of public hearings held throughout Massachusetts to get feedback from the public as to concerns that might be had with those draft regulations. They finalized those draft regulations back on March 9th, I think it was. Uh, and those were due to be published on the 23rd, which was this past Friday. And so we now know what the final regulations say, and they differ somewhat, not substantially so, but somewhat in some key, as key respects uh, from what we were working with just a few weeks ago. So I made a few tweaks to the bylaw just to reflect the current final regulations so that there's a consistency between the bylaw and the regulations, and I'll address those as we go through. So. The article is divided into a series of what I've called items. You can see it says item one, item two, et cetera, all the way to item six on the seventh page. Uh, and so I'll go through these one at a time, beginning with item one. So item one is simple. It is simply the addition uh, or the replacement of the term medical marijuana overlay district with marijuana overlay district in section 2100, which is a list of your districts. And we'll talk momentarily about why we're changing the name of that district, but the proposal is to just name it the Marijuana Overlay District. Item number two in the article is a series of modifications to your table of use regulations. And what we've done is we've added four different uses, each of which is defined by uh, the statute and or the regulations adopted by uh, the Commonwealth, by the legislature, and then by the Cannabis Control Commission. These phrases each refer to a type of marijuana establishment. So there's a reference to marijuana cultivators, 
There's a reference to marijuana retailers. There's a reference to independent testing laboratories. And there's a reference to marijuana project manufacturers. And as is the case with any other use in your table of use regulations, we have identified either with an N, meaning prohibited, or with an SP, meaning allowed by way of a special permit, where these uses are pro prohibited or allowed, in which district. So you'll see that marijuana cultivators are allowed in the residential uh, agricultural district, as well as in the uh, industrial and plant industrial districts. And so they're allowed in all three cases only upon the issuance of a special permit. And so it says SP in those categories, but N because that use is prohibited in the others. Marijuana retailers, you'll see that it says N across the board. That's because they're prohibited in all of the underlying districts, and I'll clarify that in a moment. And then you'll see that independent testing laboratories and marijuana uh, product manufacturers are prohibited in every district except the expedited permitting district, where they're allowed by special permit. Uh, there's then a uh, footnote here, two footnotes actually. One is footnote number nine, which simply says that it is the planning board that is acting as a special permit granting authority for marijuana establishments, but not for medical marijuana treatment centers, which will still be allowed by the selectmen. And then footnote 10, which says that certain marijuana establishments, most notably marijuana retailers, which it shows above are prohibited in all of the underlying districts, will be allowed by special permit in the marijuana overlay district. So that's the purpose of item two, is to designate where these uses might be allowed. Uh, item three makes um, a series of changes, um, well, I guess really just two changes, to footnote eight in the dimensional requirements. Footnote eight previously had provided a standard a distance measurement for medical marijuana treatment centers from uh, schools and other uh, areas where children may congregate. Uh, my modification, as of just three short weeks ago, essentially said that uh, the distance would be measured both for medical marijuana treatment centers and for these medical, or excuse me, for these marijuana establishments, non-medical, um, within a radius of, shall not be cited, within a radius of 500 feet of either a public or private school, daycare center, or any facility in which children commonly congregate. And then I indicated the standard by which this distance would be measured was from the nearest point of the facility to the nearest point of the medical marijuana treatment center or marijuana establishments. I've made two minor modifications to the language, just specifying the manner of measurement, which is now from the property lines of these facilities. That's because they made that change to the regulations when they issued them in final form, so I've clarified it. Uh, the second thing I've done, and it's only a notation here, and I, I leave it to your discretion as to whether you see fit to modify this. When the final regulations issued, they changed the language with respect to measurement, and they simply said that this 500-foot radius would be measured from uh, First, kindergarten and K through, uh, I guess K through 12, kindergarten and fir first grade through 12th gra grade uh, schools. They didn't make reference to daycares. They didn't make reference to other areas in which children commonly congregate. They struck those from the radius determination. Uh, an interesting statement was made, and I got this secondhand, but I think it's accurate because I've heard it from a couple of people. The, uh, the commissioner of the Cannabis Control Commission and one of the members on the five-member commission uh, as well as um, uh, an attorney with another municipal firm that uh, has specialized somewhat in uh, recreational marijuana um, guidance to municipalities, stated at a, a public forum just a couple of weeks ago um, that I was in attendance at, but I was not, not in this particular session, that there was the ability on the part of municipalities to um, reduce the distance, uh, maintaining this K through 12 standard, but reduce the distance, the, the radius, but not to increase the distance, not to uh, further specify that the distance could be measured not just from K through 12, but also from other areas where children congregate, also from daycares. Um, we've since had, me and another in my firm have since had conversations with that commissioner, um, pushing back a bit on that point. We think that's inconsistent with the Home Rule Amendment. Generally, the rule in Massachusetts is that um, legislat legislative uh, authority is a floor and not a ceiling. If you want to make something more restrictive, you certainly have the ability to do that through the zoning power. Um, I don't see why, if you're permitted to determine where these facilities can be located and place them in individual districts or overlay districts, why you then couldn't establish a radius that was greater than the 500 feet that's provided for by the statute or provide a radius from other areas where children congregate, why couldn't I simply have a map drawn with an overlay district that excludes all those areas that are, say, 1,000 feet or 1,500 feet from where children congregate? I think the concern that the CCC has is that these restrictions are going to be so prohibitive, 
1,000, 2,000, 3,000 foot radii, that essentially it's going to be a de facto prohibition of the use. When you start considering all the areas where children may congregate in communities that have multiple schools, before you know it, they can't go anywhere. That's not what we're dealing with here. You're maintaining the 500 foot radius. You've expanded the criteria somewhat to include daycare centers and other areas where children congregate. I don't have issue with that. Knowing your town as I do and knowing your underlying districts and your overlay district, I still think that there'll be adequate areas where these are permitted. Um, but I defer to you as to whether you've got that concerns. I guess the worst that happens is somebody challenges it and that portion, that, ra that radius would, uh, would fall if the courts were to essentially side with the position of, the, of that commissioner as of today. But this is just the, the reality of doing business in today's environment with recreational marijuana, with it, with it being so fluid and sort of constantly changing. And that's the latest interpretation, um, but I wanted to bring that to your attention so you'd be aware of it. Item four in the list is simply a series of changes to what is currently the Medical Marijuana Overlay District. So this district has existed for a number of years in Deerfield. Uh, we're not eliminating the district. We're doing a few things to it. We are, number one, renaming it from the Medical Marijuana Overlay District to the Marijuana Overlay District. Uh, number two, we're clarifying that medical marijuana treatment centers um, are allowed in certain locations depending upon what they're doing. So cultivation-only facilities are allowed in the cultivation districts, which is residential, agricultural, industrial, and plant industrial. Uh, medical marijuana treatment centers for manufacturing and processing are allowed in the EPD. And medical marijuana treatment centers um, are also allowed in the, in the overlay district. We are uh, clarifying that permitting shall be either through, uh, state permitting, licensing, I should say, is permitted either through the Department of Public Health or effective December 31st of 2018 through the Cannabis Control Commission, which will be assuming the authority for that process. We've included a transferability provision similar to what we're going to adopt or, or we're proposing to adopt momentarily for recreational facilities that says that these licenses are not transferable, uh, these permits are not transferable. Uh, and then finally, we're um, deleting any other reference that exists within the section to the Medical Marijuana Overlay District and replacing it with a reference to the Marijuana Overlay District. So much of that is for, for clarity so that we can use the district, uh, the overlay district, not only for medical, but also for recreational. Uh, item five, the uh, second to last item in the article, goes on for several pages. This is really the crux of uh, marijuana regulation, uh, for adult use anyway, that we're proposing for Deerfield. And uh, you know it all too well because we've been through it in, in some detail over the past few meetings. So I'll just touch upon the, the section topics. Uh, 4661 on page three uh, just speaks generally about the purpose, mimics the statute to some extent. 4662 includes different definitions for the types of marijuana establishments. I've taken these definitions or I've at least adapted them from the language of the statute or the regulations. I have made a change, and this surprised some people, not to change so much, but the reason for my change. Uh, on page four to marijuana social consumption operations, uh, you'll remember that I described these social consumption operations, which is a, an unusual term for them, but they're marijuana cafes, what we've all been calling marijuana cafes for a few years now. The, the idea of uh, one's ability to smoke marijuana, to purchase marijuana, and smoke marijuana on the premises of a, of a particular uh, locale. Uh, these were addressed um, in passing. They didn't use the term social consumption operation. They were addressed in passing in the legislation itself, which simply said that if municipalities would like them, they have to vote um, to allow them, that they're otherwise considered to be prohibited. Uh, but in the regulations that were issued back at the end of 2017, there were a series of pro, uh, provisions that addressed, it, addressed social consumption operations, provided a definition for that terminology, and then provided for um, a manner uh, in which they would be licensed through the Cannabis Control Commission, and then uh, essentially addressing things like local control over these facilities, the same way that they address local console, control over other sorts of marijuana establishments. When the new regulations issued just a couple of weeks ago, the final regulation, <coughs> what was interesting is that suddenly there's no definition for marijuana social consumption operations any longer. Suddenly there are no provisions, with the exception of a couple of passing references, to social consumption operations any longer. And in guidance documents that the Cannabis Control Commission has issued, they've essentially said, maybe I'm, maybe I'm paraphrasing here, it got too complicated. We're, we're, not, we're not there yet. Um, so they deferred to a later date regulation of social consumption operations. So the regulations no longer address them. Wow. So 
good news is the legislation that issued in mid-2017 did address them and said if you want to allow them, you've got to, you've got to go the route of actively allowing them through a vote. And so there's no concern that, well, what if one pops up on the corner? Um, there's no licensing process, so I'm not sure how one would, but can't happen because they're not regulated yet um, under, the, under the regulations. The bad news is we, we really have no, no sense as to what that licensing process is going to be like, whether they're going to be considered a subcategory of um, marijuana retailers, which there was some confusion before as to whether they were or weren't based upon how they were addressed in the regulations. We don't have answers to these questions. We just know that they're no longer referenced in the regulations. And so what I thought was appropriate is not to remove the references in your bylaw because you wanted them in there to specifically say that they wouldn't be allowed. Um, but I've still used the same terminology, but I've, I've slightly tweaked the definition because I don't want to be too specific in saying that it's an entity licensed by the Commonwealth um, because I'm not really sure what that licensing process is going to be, I presume. I can't imagine that there wouldn't be a licensing process for social consumption operations, but we just don't know because the regulations don't address them. So I've simply defined marijuana social consumption operations as an entity that purchases or otherwise acquires marijuana from a licensed marijuana establishment and se se sells single servings of marijuana to consumers for consumption or use on the premises. Substantially the same as the definition that existed before, but tweaked slightly to be consistent with the fact that it is no longer uh, defined in the regulations. Now, in, in concerning that, what is the local authority that has to forward it to the state? I assume the state cannot do that without some local authority Good. requesting it. Is that correct? So there, there, there would be a need for a vote if your goal was to allow for these sorts of facilities. If you take no action with respect to the facilities, and we have, you've taken action because later on we state that they're explicitly prohibited, um, but unlike other prohibitions, if you choose to prohibit other types of marijuana establishments, I've already explained, you've got to go to the ballot box with those questions. The way that they wrote the legislation, and it's not the, the cleanest piece of writing, but the way that they've wrote the legislation for these on-premises consumption operations uh, is that to allow on-premises consumption, you've got to vote it into, into existence. You've got okay, to so let's vote say, to Okay, so let's say that that happens then is it, is it like the alcohol and the other ones where is it the selectmen that, that they apply to and then they have to go to the state and get licensed? We don't I know. Mean, the regulations oh, okay. have not even addressed it. The regulations contain two references, which I suspect are maybe unintended uh, leftover references to social consumption using that terminology, which of course is no longer defined. Um, they contain a couple of passing references and essentially the passing references amount to them saying that they'll address them at a future time. Okay. <laughs> So we don't know. Well, Adam, I have a quick question. If, if someone should come to the town and want to apply for a tobacco smoke shop, um, and we allowed that, but the, the patrons actually were smoking marijuana, would we lose control over that? So it's, it's a separate issue. Um, so the, the concept of smoking marijuana, so to, when social consumption operations were addressed in the draft regulations and defined in the draft regulations, and even as they are defined here, we're talking about an establishment that purchases from a licensed medical marijuana establishment, licensed recreational marijuana establishment, and then sells the single servings on premises to be consumed. Right. There is That's this issue, and I know it's arisen in a couple of communities in Massachusetts already, of smoking marijuana that you've purchased legally elsewhere in another location. Right. That's something that is not so much a zoning issue, and so it isn't addressed here. How we go about addressing it is a broader question, something that would probably have to be addressed by the selectmen through the adoption of appropriate policies or general bylaws. But it's not something that's a zoning issue because it's not something that you would explicitly be allowing. You're not allowing for uh, marijuana consumption uh, locations or, or lounges or anything of that sort in your zoning. But you know whether individuals can gather in a private club that is properly permitted and smoke recreational marijuana the same that they same way that they could in their home, it, it's a it's an interesting question and we don't have answers to it yet. Thank you. And that legislation, that sort of regulation, goes to the select board. Why doesn't it go? Why do we not? I still don't understand that. Well, one. it's not zoning regulation, so it's not a question of whether we're zoning for the use. Yeah, we're, okay, okay. We're, we're identifying right. marijuana establishments as a use. We're saying. Where, they can, where marijuana can be cultivated, we're addressing where marijuana can be tested and manufactured, we're addressing where marijuana can be sold, and we're even addressing where marijuana can be sold and smoked on the premises. Right. But how do we, through a zoning tool, go right. about controlling somebody bringing, it's like attempting to craft uh, 
licensing for alcoholic beverages as to whether or not I can drink my alcoholic beverage in my home versus bring it to a private club. Right. Some communities have BYOB regulations that the mm -hmm. selectmen have adopted either by way of bylaw or by way of policy that address the ability to do right. exactly that. <clears throat> but it's not really a zoning issue. Right. Okay. So um, section 4663 addresses um, the applicability and talks about the requirement of a special permit in those districts where the use is allowed. Section 4664 makes reference to the overlay district that we just amended in the previous item and talks about the different types of uses that would be allowed in the uh, underlying or overlay district. It speaks to marijuana cultivators, product manufacturers, retailers, and testing laboratories. An important notation here and one that we discussed a couple of meetings ago is the fact that marijuana retailers exclude marijuana social consumption operations, which we've still defined up above, and are permitted only until the number of marijuana retailers equals or exceeds 20% of the number of licenses issued within the town of Deerfield for the retail sale of alcoholic beverages not to be drunk on the premises. So that's the standard that's contained in the legislation. That's the, the cap that you're allowed to place on the number of retailers in your community. Which is so what we guessed. That. That's what. Right. right. Um, section 4665 is entitled Dimensional and Performance Standards. It goes on for the better part of a page and a half and addri addresses um, the, the typical sorts of standards that you would apply. Now, in the, in the usual special permit context, you've got these as well. When you evaluate a special permit that comes before your board, you look at various criteria to determine whether or not the applicant and the project satisfies those criteria. With uh, recreational marijuana, we've obviously got unique criteria, so we've attempted to address some of those um, with, with some degree of specificity, but also giving the board a, a degree of uh, discretion in determining whether they're appropriate. Um, I did make a minor change here, and, and um, Pat Smith and I were just discussing it before we get underway, because it's a change I made based upon what I perceive to be the plain language of the final regulations. However, there is a document that has been updated as of last Monday, I think it was, um, that is entitled Municipal Guidance Issued by the Cannabis Control Commission that suggests that maybe there's no need for the change that I've made here, but I think the safer course is to go with it. Um, essentially, the issue was many communities have said in order to get a special permit from the special permit granting authority for this sort of a use, your facility has to be licensed through the state. So you've got to give to us as part of the permitting process proof that you've gone through the licensing process. There's language in the regulations that suggests that the license won't issue until all <laughs> municipal <laughs> approvals are received. Well, how does that Which work? came first, you get the egg. Well, exactly. Um, the municipal guidance document that issued, which is not in and of itself a regulation, it's just a guidance document. It doesn't have the force or effect of law, but it does tell you how the Cannabis Control Commission might act and what they might enforce, seems to suggest that there is no absolute need to have all local permits in hand, so long as the municipality has an opportunity to chime in and state that there's a licensing or a permitting process that's required um, prior to the licensed operation going into, into effect or into operation. Um, I still think that my change works because my change simply takes out the absolute prerequisite that the license be issued from the state and adds a new item one that says no use of any special permit or site plan approval issued here under shall commence nor shall construction of a marijuana establishment authorized here under begin unless and until all requisite licenses and approvals have issued, have first been obtained under the, the statute and regulation. So it, it gives you the ability to um, use your discretion. If, you, if, if the applicant indicates to you that it has a license in hand already, great. If it doesn't and says to you, you know, we're, we're, we're three quarters of the way through the process, but we're not complete yet, you can say, okay, well, fine, we're prepared to act on your application, but we're going to include a condition in it consistent with what our bylaw requires that before you operate or before you even commence construction, you've got to have all requisite licenses in hand, and you could require that they provide you know, uh, evidence of that with their application for a building permit, for example. So it still gives you the same discretion you had before, but it's not quite as absolute as the language I had in the earlier version. Um, I won't go through the better part of page five, but these are just the various standards that we have discussed. Again, I'm happy to address them if anybody has questions. That continues on for page, to page six. Um, then we get to subsection 4666, which addresses signage. Um, 4667, which is that same transferability provision I had referenced that we had added to the medical marijuana treatment center bylaw that says that uh, there shall be no transfer. 4668 talks about lapse of a permit if it's not utilized within a year. 
4669 is that prohibition on marijuana social consumption operations, which is an outright prohibition. Again, I, I would argue not even required based upon the language of the, the, the uh, legislation, which indicates that absent a vote allowing them, they're prohibited anyway, but this makes it very clear that they're prohibited. Uh, that's all for item five, and that item six, the last item on page seven, is just a, a, another of these cleanup items. We referenced before in the substance, in the, in the text of the uh, marijuana, uh, adult use marijuana bylaw, that applicants would require both a special permit and site plan approval. Um, item six makes a change to section 5400 of your bylaw, which is the site plan review uh, thresholds, those sorts of projects that are required to get site plan review. This just adds um, uh, marijuana establishments to that list, so there's no question. It's sort of a cross-reference thing. Mm -hmm. So regardless of which section you're looking at, you understand that you require site plan approval. And that site plan approval, that site plan review process would be uh, would be commingled, would be combined with your special permit review since they both be before the planning board. It would still be the long. same site plan re review we currently use. Oh, right. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Same okay. process. Thank you. So that was a, a lengthier explanation than I'd hoped for, but that's sort of the, yep. the substance mm -hmm. of what we spent eight or nine or ten hours doing over the past past couple mm -hmm. of months. So again, I'm not going anywhere. Happy to answer questions that the board members have or that members of the public have. Well, I have a couple of questions. What happens in a situation where you, we have a fixed distance of 500 feet from a, a daycare center to an establishment, a, a marijuana establishment? What happens in the case where you have a licensed establishment here, and then the house next door wants to start a daycare. Mm -hmm. Do you discriminate against the daycare that they can't do that, or do you try to force these people to close? Well, you, you, you can't force the operation to cease because the okay. operation is properly licensed. So then you would have to tell the people they couldn't open the daycare next door. I'm not sure how the licensing, what the licensing requirements would be for the daycare, how they, as they relate to the existence of a marijuana establishment in such okay. close proximity. The idea is obviously forward looking. Um, for zoning purposes and determining where these facilities can be located. Um, I, I'd have to, obviously this issue hasn't, hasn't arisen yet right. in the marijuana just, context, but uh, I, I'm not sure that you'd be on solid footing either to deny uh, permission under your bylaw if permission were required for a daycare facility if the applicant were seeking to place the facility in a location once the marijuana establishment was already in operation. Right. Right. Is there a solution for that then? Uh, I, in one of uh, the transcripts I got from the state, I saw that one of the considerations in the uh, by or their rules and regulations were to allow growers to sell directly to consumers. Has that changed, or was it just? You, it might have been a consideration, but didn't go get into the final regulations. Yeah, they haven't addressed it in the regulations. There's a um, there's. Uh, Terminology is escaping me here. Uh, there's a micro business, so there are micro business provisions that um, contemplate the possibility of um, combined uses. Um, the idea that you would be able to both uh, grow and sell as part of the same operation. Um, the way that your bylaw is currently structured, we tried to be s somewhat more simplistic than getting into you know every potential use category. So you might remember that we looked at the Montague model early on, and a couple of others that were based upon that. And they had provided for greater specificity with respect to the uses that they added to their table. They didn't just have four uses. They had eight or nine or ten uses and sort of sub-uses, uh, addressing indoor versus outdoor cultivation, addressing this, this concept of micro-businesses. The way that your bylaw is currently structured, you essentially need to be in a location where you could both perform the, the cultivation and the retail in order to qualify as such. Okay. So I understand that, but I overlooked. So the, the the direct selling, I know that we have an overlay district for that. But if a grower wants to get that micro business, then we could deny that. That's correct. Because okay. there's only one one retail establishment allowed. Right. If we had only 20 um, licenses, right, up for the sig for the alcohol. That's correct. Yes. That's correct. Has the state had any uh, final decision on the amount of tax that uh, the local authorities can impose? 3%. It is 3%. And what about licensing fees? They haven't addressed licensing fees specifically. Um, generally, in other contexts, licensing fees are permitted. So if there was a licensure process, then 
reasonable fees would, would be permitted, I would think, but they've not addressed it specifically to my but knowledge. It's, it's reasonable fees. You can't, the town <laughs> couldn't impose a $500,000 fee to license them. Kip, so. on the last Franklin planning meeting, which was last Thursday, if I heard things correctly, the host agreement can include up to 3%, up, so. So, so there's, a, there's a couple of pieces to this. So in the medical marijuana context, most municipalities, it wasn't a requirement, but most municipalities negotiated host community agreements with these uh, marijuana, uh, medical marijuana treatment centers or RMDs, registered marijuana dispensaries. And the idea was that in order to get the municipality's acquiescence, because part of the licensing process was that the municipality issue what they called a letter of support or non-opposition, would be that they would uh, negotiate this agreement and the, the developer, the applicant, would agree to provide some form of mitigation, usually in the form of payments to the municipality in exchange for the municipality's support. And there are a number of different versions that uh, have been structured in different municipalities. Some are flat fees, some are based upon a percentage. Um, but in, in many circumstances, they were in perpetuity for as long as the facility was operational. Uh, might begin, most that I saw began with a lesser percentage, like three quarters of a percent or one percent, and then moved up to as much as three percent in years three, four, or five, and then continued on at that higher percentage on a year-to-year -year basis. When the new legislation was adopted for purposes of um, adult use marijuana, although this provision applies to both medical and adult use, it now requires these host community agreements requires they be entered into with municipalities and gives municipalities the opportunity to require payments that are, again, mitigation payments to help sort of soften the blow of a new facility um, coming into a community and the cost that might be associated with that. I know somebody earlier talked about what are the costs of the community. So what the legislation says is you've got to itemize those costs. You've got to have some justification for why you're going to suffer a cost in the amount of X. But then you can defray those costs and place them upon the applicant, and you can do so for a period of up to five years. Now, our first response to that was, wow, now we're capped at five years. And it said up to 3% in terms of what the cost could be. And so we said to ourselves, okay, well, maybe that means that it's 3% for the first five years because by, at that point you can then transition it into a 3% sales tax essentially moving forward that will replace what was the 3% uh, charge under the, the host community agreement. There are still multiple interpretations as to the host community agreement and what happens after five years. I've heard some say that the agreement itself must expire after five years. I've heard others say that it's only the, fi the, the, the fee, the mitigation payment that expires after five years, but the actual agreement itself can continue on. I've heard others say that you can renegotiate the agreement in five years, which seems sort of counterintuitive if it's maxed out at five years and no payment can be made beyond five years, that in five years you could then renegotiate it. I suppose you could if you could continue to justify the cost. I will say in the medical marijuana context, and I understand medical marijuana is quite different than recreational, um, com some communities have had difficulty justifying the cost of the community. When you've got a medical marijuana manufacturing facility that's inside a building in the industrial park that looks much like any other building in the industrial mm -hmm. park, what's the added cost associated with permitting that use versus the widget factory that's next door? There can be some challenges there. Maybe there's some additional security, um, but beyond that, the additional cost has been somewhat difficult, d difficult to justify. I suspect it might be easier in the context of recreational marijuana. Well, we had one resident say, put a, a value of say thirty million dollars on this. Couldn't the town charge um, a fee for the value of that business, similar to how we do with building permits? Um, I'll just say a, a dollar per thousand or ten dollars per thousand. If they come in, they're going to do thirty million dollars worth of business. Couldn't we put a value for that license of ten dollars per thousand or something? It would be an astronomical figure. But if somebody was going to build a $30 million building, the town would benefit that way too. Not based upon the way that the regulations are currently written. The regulations require you to tie that, and it's not even the regulations, yeah. it's the underlying statute, it requires you to provide justification as to um, oh, the, the, okay. the, the cost and expense that are it's being suffered by the municipality. So okay. um, could you devise a formula for that? Sure, but you would be in a position of having okay. the burden of proof to prove to that that formula it. was an accurate reflection of the cost that you'd incurred. Okay. But the building permit would be yes. still Building there. permit, yeah. Where I was when I came up with that number, and I was basing it on the fact that at the last meeting when I was here, we were talking about um, allowing uh, cultivation, outdoor cultivation, mm -hmm. which I believe, Adam, that they are allowing the sale of that product to facilities that would be retail facilities in the eastern part of 
of the state. And as a farming community, I wouldn't see why there wouldn't be able to produce that kind of um, revenue <coughs> based on everything, not on a, rec not on a um, retail. I don't think you're going to do $30 million for retail. But that's not taxable. The grow, the grow isn't taxable. Only the retail is taxable. Is that true, Adam? That's correct. Yeah. Based on gross gross sales, sales to the public, not transfers. Oh. Great. Hi, Craig Garner, uh, We have so many audience can answer a lot of these questions. Joe Kachuri from Harvest Inc., including yours, Carol, about um, all the different things about the money, profits, percentages. This guy does it for a living. So if uh, anyone wants to be interested in what he's got to say, I'm sure he can tell you all what you need to know. Thank you. Just, just to follow up on the, the language, because I've got it here, the, the community impact fee, 3% of gross sales to be paid to the host community, as long as the fee is reasonably related to real costs imposed on the municipality due to the establishment of the facility. So the that's the language. burden of proof is on the town. town to prove your costs. It's, it's not just, you can't just come up with a random number. Hey, I think, you know, we spent an extra $100,000 in police or whatever. You, there has to be hard data um, mm -hmm. in order to justify. That's correct. I, mean, I guess my only caveat to that is once challenged, the burden would be on the town. Correct. I, I don't know what the enforcement mechanism would be. I'm not sure to what extent the Cannabis Control Commission is um, going to be undertaking enforcement action or provide some degree of oversight. But you are correct that if the question was asked and you were put to the test, it would be on the it would be the burden of the municipality to establish that that fee is reasonably related per the statute. That's correct. Adam, I have a question. It's it's related, but not necessarily the zoning. Do you have to be a Massachusetts resident to buy marijuana in Massachusetts? You know, say you're wheeling through from New York State. Mm -hmm. Can you whip into the retail location and buy it as an out-of-state resident? I believe you can. So with the, under, the, under the medical marijuana uh, regime, you were required to have an appropriate card. Um, because you needed to be a patient that was entitled to purchase medical marijuana. There are no cards for recreational mm -hmm. marijuana. Does anyone else have any questions, Fred? Max? Do we have, is there? So, convicted felons, people with history of abusing drugs, they can buy it too. Right. I, I don't think it's being regulated in that so, respect any differently than... Are we going to... Is there provisions for uh, liability insurance for the growers and retailers? Yes. There are insurance provisions in the regulations. So... Rachel, did you have something? No. no. Internet sales are the, th the other thing. But that's, that's not in our zoning anything. Just Curious. <laughs> no, and that, that hasn't been addressed in the licensing scheme either, the concept of internet sales or, or anything other than brick and mortar. Yep. Not yet. Are there any other questions from the audience? Colorado. So Jeff Bezos gets involved. Yeah, yeah. Well, Colorado closed that one down, so. Jeff Bezos, Ms. Drones. Dick? Yes. I'm Annalie Wolfkuhl from Four Mountain Road, and um, we've talked some tonight about the cost to the town that perhaps can't be quantified. I'm a frequent visitor to Washington State, and I've kind of been astounded at the billboards, the neon signs, the gated and guarded facilities, if you will, and the changes to the characters of the towns that I've been going through. Um, on page 6, section 4666, talks about signage and says that all signage shall comply with section 3200 and 3230. I certainly don't know 3200 and 3230 and don't know whether or not it would be appropriate to have those attached as an addendum so that those of us who are evaluating all of this You can, could, go, you can go online and get the uh, zoning bylaws there, one, section 179, and they'll, they'll have all that in there. But just so you know that 
that section wouldn't allow a sign that has more than 32 square feet right. on either on the side. And it oh. couldn't be in, in, it couldn't be internally led. Or Can't be a neon sign. Anything like that. Yeah. Those are those are in our sign bylaws now. That's for any signs in the town of Deerfield. Okay, because certainly we would want to make sure that as we're voting on this that we have strong consideration about how the marketing will happen right. and how that can impact the character of the town. Could I ask your, your uh, question? Mm -hmm. When you go through these towns in Washington, would you consider it a positive change or a negative Oh, change? absolutely negative. I mean, there's billboards. Um, some of them are even the neon billboards. And then the different facilities are often painted in colors that don't fit with the rest of the character of the main So it's changed the entire character of the community. Absolutely, yes, absolutely, you know, yes. And then, of course, lots of um, wrought iron over all of the windows. And um, so it, it looks, and, and this is town after town after town, is, and I'm talking about smaller towns probably along the, I, I can't speak to Seattle or Tacoma, but yeah. So mm -hmm. anyway, I would hate to see that happen here. So we go to zoning. Well, okay, I just can check out the zoning signage, and I should be able to. Find yes, it. if you go to the website, go under the bylaws, you can see that section. It's, it's probably what 120 some pages long. Yeah. No. No. What section? It's 90 pages. 91 pages. 91 pages. Yeah. So then I would suppose with 91 pages, I would be, you know, seeking my judgment to the planning board that you are feeling that those signage bylaws are appropriate. The signage yeah, bylaws they are. are in section 3200. Yeah. Cares are regulated by the state, state, and they won't approve a site if it doesn't comply with their regulations and it's out of zoning compliance. So that's I've helped people license a couple of them in town, and they're very difficult to get licensed for. <laughs> I'd like to bring up a couple of subjects. Okay, first subject is well, I've been I should say I've been working on this for two years with everybody. The first subject I'd like to bring up that was deleted was a five acre minimum for cultivators. I personally live on an acre and a half, 60,000 square feet, live in the sections, residential agricultural sections, it could be. If the state changed their regulation down the road, people would automatically be able to plop down a 10,000 square foot greenhouse on their front lawn in between a neighborhood. So I think eliminating the five acre minimum from there was a mistake, yeah. okay? That's all I'll say about that. The second thing, and I'm gonna speak for all three of you Board of Health members that are here, and you can interrupt me at any time. Tomorrow I'm attending a Massachusetts Board of Health meeting in Newton, Mass. It specifically is the Board of Health regulating marijuana inspections of premises, inspections of everything, the health of the workers and all that. And I should come back with, this is from Cheryl Sabara, the hmm. Massachusetts health attorney. Yep. So I should come back with information on that. So whatever bylaws you passed, and Adam, I ran this by Adam already, whatever bylaws you passed, the Selectman Board of Health will then have to regulate those inspections on top of the bylaws. Yep. So just wanted to be aware of that. Very good. Thank you. Members have a five acre minimum. We talked about that, he and I. Are there any other questions or comments? No? Did we have a five acre minimum at some point? I just don't remember us having that. that it was suggested talked, to us. It was but suggested, we but we it never in. put it in. Mm -hmm. we, we got talking about setbacks instead mm -hmm. um, and got diverted from it just because. And we did, you know, I think we did get diverted in the sense that we started thinking, well, if you had the setbacks, you know, it would squoze and that would kind of stand in place of making a requirement. Of a uh, I, I think that somebody at one of our meetings recommended, it may have been Greg, to use common sense in the site plan review 
and um, yeah. so forth when somebody's applying for something so that you don't put something in there that you know is going to be a problem right. and assume that people are going to come in and they're going to say, I'm neighbor next to it. I don't want a four-story building next to my house. Well, that, that is a, I think that's really tricky. Uh, that puts a lot of pressure, uh, on, this, pressure on this on board. I mean, because, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Adam, I, you might weigh in on this. If, uh, if it stays the way it is and a resident comes to us, for site plan review to have a grow facility on their two acre building right. lot where they have a lot of close and got houses. All the and you know, they're all the neighbors, we don't want this, we don't want this. And so as the board, we say it's not a good fit. Where does that leave us? Or we, even they do want it, the neighbors don't speak up, but we still see it in the wrong place. That's even another possibility. I mean, you know, it's, it's, they could argue, hey, look at this is a, a right, you know, I comply with all of your rules and regulations. How are What's the justifications for turning us down? Yeah. So that last part is the most important part. Um, I heard you reference site plan review. Um, it is important that it's a special permit process in conjunction with site plan review. And the distinction is that yes, right. site plan review mm -hmm. nearly always must be approved with few, few uh, exceptions. Right. Whereas as a special, special permit, permit granting authority, you've got much more discretionary authority. Um, that said, you're right in that objective standards are far preferred to subjective standards because with objective standards, either the standard is satisfied or not, you have the ability even to craft waiver provisions that would allow you to waive those objective standards on a case-by-case -case basis as deemed appropriate, in which case if you choose not to waive it, you can simply say you didn't meet the objective standard, and I would say nine times out of ten, a court would, would uh, approve that action by the board. With subjective standards, you're applying those on a case-by-case -case basis, and it is ultimately your burden of proof if there's a challenge to establish that you were justified in rejecting, in particular, a proposal based upon the subjective standards. So I think that, um, to, to Dick's point, I think there are certain provisions, and I'm referencing specifically Section 4665, beginning on the bottom of page 4, onto page 5, and onto page 6, what I've called the dimensional and performance standards, several of these that could be used as grounds to deny a project that was proposed on a 60,000 square foot plot. Um, I don't see a concern with a four story high building because remember, if we're talking about cultivation in a residential district, residential agricultural well, yeah, district, greenhouse. you've got to meet the underlying requirements for height. Mm -hmm. But if there was a proposal to place an outdoor cultivation facility, for example, on that 60,000 square foot parcel, and there was concerns about, well, it's, you know, you get residential neighbors on both sides and it's going to be smelly or it's going to, the, the odors are concerning and the, the intensity of use of the site is concerning. There are certain provisions that allow you to consider, for example, number six, noise, odor, dust, glare, fumes, vibrations, heat, glare, other conditions. Um, require odor reduction measures. You could determine that there's no ability to employ those sorts of measures on so small a parcel. You do have minimum setbacks. They're not substantial, so they certainly, certainly wouldn't prevent the use of a 60,000 square foot parcel, but you've got minimum setbacks that would need to be complied with. Um, you've got minimum separation requirements between marijuana retailers if you're dealing with a circumstance where there's too many uh, retailers being proposed in a particular location, although you're capped at one, so in the short term that shouldn't be a problem. Um, but there are provisions here, but they're all those sort of subjective provisions. So the burden's on you to establish that if you're going to say no simply because it's not a good fit, that it's not a good fit because you applied the criteria and you determined that the criteria couldn't be satisfied. That's different than saying, sorry, you don't have a five-acre lot, can't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, I just want to say, Carolyn Ness, Board of Selectmen, Board of Health. I just want to say I support Dick's um, discussion item of a minimum of five acres just because um, I feel that's uh, the terminology or the kind of um, a definition that the USDA uh, uses for farm um, operations, and that's the kind of thing that we are trying to promote support. here in town, support of our farmers. And um, so I would say bring back that um, minimum five we, acres. We never had it. That's the thing. It was never on our, so we'd have to add it. I mean, it's my sense. It was on the original mm -hmm. one. It was deleted. Was it on the very original one? Yes. Because no. that was what Dick and I had put on. Oh, okay. So I don't deleted. feel like I've seen it for a few iterations. So Well, you haven't for a few iterations. It's been an evolving process. So you might remember that when I came to you 
what was it, eight weeks ago for the first of the informational yeah, meetings. Yeah, yeah. The document that was presented was a document that I had crafted last March, which of course was before the legislation uh, had okay, even okay, be, okay, been okay. rewritten, that was to provide for okay. marijuana cultivation, uh, uh, primarily cultivation more so than anything else. Um, and that bylaw proposal had a, had a five, five, acre, five minimum. acre minimum requirement as a yeah. footnote within the dimensional table. But we yeah. quickly strayed from that version. Right. And that was a, right. a page and a half document and came up with something much more extensive in light of the new, the new uh, legislative scheme yeah. that exists. Yeah. And then yeah. I would just like to say, um, I would hope that you would support um, the select board being the um, special permitting authority because we are um, negotiate the host agreement. We already um, oversee the process for medical marijuana, and um, you know, as and we supervise the police, which would be you know the security aspect of it. And we would want to uh, look at the whole process and be in control of the whole process, so we can negotiate the best kind of deal for the town of Deerfield. And um, I feel that if, if we don't have the whole process, then we wouldn't be able to maximize our ability to have a negotiation on the host agreement and licensing process and the educational part of it, um, the outreach to the schools and stuff that is part of the licensing process. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I'm Carol Kraps. I live on Mill Village Road. Would you mind coming up here, Carol? <laughs> Only because the people on okay. TV land want to hear you. All right. Carol Sorry. Kraps, Mill Village Road. Where I live, my house, right across the street, there's acres and acres of land. All open, huge acreage. I've been told it's under APR. I don't know for sure, but I, I've been told that it is. Have, has anyone found out if marijuana would be allowed to be grown on land that's been APR'd? Apparently not. That's what I'm hearing. It's not allowed. It's not considered a product. Product? Okay, great. Okay, because that would be really... <laughs> and and if, you haven't, if you haven't been to the other meetings, Carol, I think it was kind of like a general assumption. It doesn't have to be, but that most of the people that want to grow it here would do it in greenhouses. Well, that's what I was thinking, because growing it outside, you're going to have a big problem with odor. There's no question about it. And I don't think anybody came in here and told us they were going to do it outdoors. I think Actually, it would be so bad that you wouldn't even have to smoke it, because <laughs> all you have to do is inhale it, and you'd be having a little bit of a high. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else? Yes, sir. I'm Joe Kachuri. I'm the National Real Estate Director for Harvest Inc. It's a cannabis company. They're based out of Tempe, Arizona, and they're considered to be one of the largest or certainly second or third largest cannabis company in North America. My history with uh, Harvest is they, um, they're in multiple states. We're vertically integrated, meaning we have cultivation, we have dispensaries, we have extraction, we have PhD chemists, we have PhD botanists on staff. So when we do something, we try to do it at the highest level. I just want to address a couple of things, how we, our company, operates. So there was an issue of a sign. So we've had some local representatives uh, come out and flew, flew out to Arizona to see our operations firsthand. The only thing that we have on all of our dispensaries is one name. It says Harvest. It's not, it's not orange. It's not bright yellow. It's just a light c color tan Harvest. And our logo is a Harvest wheel, just like you would see on a farmer. We don't even have that all the time. All we have is Harvest. We know for a fact that if somebody is looking for medicine because it's medical, if they're looking for medicine, they will find us. So we know that. So we don't need to advertise it. And I understand there's other states that they do what they do. We don't subscribe to that. Our, the way we look at our business is we try to be like Apple. If you've been to an Apple facility, it has, 
It doesn't have any distinctive factors except it's comfortable. If you're 18 or 88, you come in and you buy your wares, and that's what we chose to do. There's no joints in the walls. There's no Bob Marley. There's none of that. That doesn't exist. And I'll be happy to provide a PowerPoint presentation with uh, audiovisual or just slides. And uh, again, there has been people from the local community that has come out to visit. Security. That always is an issue, and I don't blame them. Our security is better than a bank, and I, that's, that's a fact. That's not just a, a loosely stated word. Our security is greater than a bank. Anytime you drive on in our, any one of our facilities anywhere in the United States, five cameras are on you at the moment you drive or walk on our property. Every one of our facilities has a greeter. Now, this is something that probably less than 10% of the people in the country have. A greeter is someone that's at the door. They, they greet you. And they ask you, have you ever been here before? Yes, no. Have you purchased before? Yes, no. And then he directs you. So if you've not been, it goes into you cannot buy, even if you have a card, even if you're legal. You have to go into a consultation room. We sit with a, cons a consultant with ours. Why are you here today? What is, your, what is your ailment, pain, inflammation, whatever, glaucoma? We sit, and then we go, and we recommend. You get to choose. So that's the, that's, uh, that is common in everything that we do. We designed that in. All of our employees, including myself, went through an FBI background check. Otherwise, you're not hired. Plain and simple. You get a DUI, sorry, can't help you. Banking. A lot of people say, what happens to the cash? What happens to this? What happens to that? And that's a real concern. We have banking nationally with an FDIC, a federally regulated bank. Banks are allowed to take money. They just choose not to. So we, probably less than 1% of the entire industry has banking, so that's a securitized situation where um, an armored vehicle shows up and collects the cash. We pay our taxes through the bank, we pay all our employees through the bank, so we're 100% fully ver out there visually so you can see there's nothing that we're doing that's with cash. The last thing I'll say is we have a couple doctors on staff. They're uh, medical practitioners, and what they are, they specialize in the world of cannabis and all of what it does. I think there's a big unknown of what, what there is. And I'll leave one topic that this gentleman has taught me. There's 400 characteristics to a plant. Only one is the psychotropic, the feel good. There's 399 characteristics to every plant, and it's to heal you, plain and simple. I'll be happy to fly this man in. He'll give you an hour presentation or a 15-minute presentation. It will be a, a Q&A afterwards, and you can ask him any question you want. He's a medical practitioner, he, and just specializes in cannabis. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else has any questions or comments? Okay. Uh, Steve's you think? got his hand up. What's that? Steve's got his hand up. Steve? Yeah, I just um, was noticing There's a lot of like um, restrictions on the locations of the facilities and how close they can be to each other and all this. And it seems basically pretty restrictive to the point where it's almost looking like you can only allow one such facility in town, probably. I mean, how far can well, they have depends to be two kind of thousand? Yeah, is it retail about? or is it cultivating or is it? Well, I mean, I guess in terms of let's say the retail. You can only have only one at this point. So you are already acknowledging that. Yes. So there would only be one yes. potential store. license of store for that store or whatever. Correct. Well, that sort of seems to set up a monopoly-like situation. Can, Carolyn. Uh, Woody, I just want to say yeah. the reason why instead of setting it up like that is to roll it out as conservatively as possible. All right. Because well, we, we've done we set it up mm -hmm. originally for medical marijuana. And we're just rolling over the overlay district and, and all the locations exactly the same. It's, it's so that it can be rolled out as conservatively as possible. It doesn't mean that at a later date you can't, you can't, I mean, it's just like, oh, so, so it is it's not like package store licenses and you can apply for more at a later date. But it's not, res it's not restrictive in the, in, in let's see, you're saying in, in the long term. No, it, it, this, people can decide one way it can change. Later on. All right. It just seems like it's an unusual to like set up a situation where the only there's only going to be one business, a private enterprise, 
that is obviously after profit, but it's the only one allowed in town. It doesn't sound very, um, I don't but know, we are just American no, and but, capitalistic. You know, I just saw in the paper that Greenfield's going to open one up in the old uh, VFW mm -hmm. building there. So it, it's, it's, there's plenty of places around here where people can go and get it if they don't like his price here, whoever. We'll just say that been, all right, so there will be some competition. The thing is the competition would not be within Deerfield. Right? No, that's right. All right, just an interesting so restriction on a, biz on a business. So if there's only going to be one such license, maybe you should have an auction for it. Then. Well, this whole thing is a very interesting <laughs> dilemma. Because I know, it's an unusual hand, situation. On one hand, you know, you, you, there are people who want to bring this, and yet there's... No, it, it's it's kind of tricky because you want to bring it in, but you want to restrict where you can have it, and, and I think that was goes to John's point. Right. Why, you know, anybody can grow it. You know, but you said there's an, but there's a but understanding only, it's going to be flexible. Well, it, it, in, in reality, whoever is the medical marijuana yeah. person in town has That's going the to be first it. right to be the recreational one as well. So I think at that point, mm -hmm. probably that's going to be the only location. Well, that's what I was seeing. That it's sort of sensing that we're talking about one spot in town, and there's um, the possible expansion of that in the distant future, perhaps. Yes, but, yeah. All right. So the scope of it is really only of one business. Correct. Well, all right. One retail. One, one retail, retail business. business. I mean, that's what I'm saying. The uh, the public access kind of business. Yes. All right. That's my that brought something to my mind here, Adam. If, if say two farmers wanted to produce this and cultivate it, is that is that apply to them? And only one can have it. No, anybody can. Well, that's what I, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, one retail. So I, I think the important thing to note, and maybe this is why Carolyn has commented on uh, the short versus the long term nature. So we've structured the bylaw and what is being proposed for adoption at town meeting to include, and this is really where it starts and where it ends, the provision in section 4664 on page four of the handout, where it allows for certain types of uses within the overlay district, included among those uses is marijuana retailer. Remember, retailers are only allowed in the overlay district. And it says, only until the number of marijuana retailers equals or exceeds 20% of the number of licenses issued within the town of Deerfield for the retail sale of alcoholic beverages not to be drunk on the premises per chapter 138 of Mass General Laws. So uh, I didn't I didn't devise that language. That language is directly out of the statute because the statute gives the, you the ability to cap the number of retail establishments based upon the number of licenses that you've issued for alcoholic beverages, um, off-premises alcoholic beverages. So that's how we've capped it. If that statement were not in there, I, I don't think the way that we've structured the zoning that we would be limiting um, marijuana retailers to a single site. In fact, we've been quite careful to mm -hmm. zone this in such a way that there are sufficient locations, not just for retailers, but for other types of uses, sufficient number of locations throughout the town where this, this mar adult use marijuana um, business could, could occur. And by business, I mean cultivation, testing, manufacture, retail. Um, if you were to limit it entirely to one location in town, I think that the state would consider that to be a de facto prohibition of the use and would be quite the same as you going to the polls and getting the voters to say no, except you would have been making an end run around that requirement, and that wouldn't stand. But we've allowed this to occur in many locations, but for retail specifically, we've limited it to the overlay, and then we've said we're only going to issue one. Um, so how do we, how do we uh, Kip is saying that if, if five, if five uh, par uh, farms wanted to grow it, that they could all apply and get a yes. permit to grow it? Yes. Or only one can grow. All of them. To grow, they could all grow. There's only okay, that's what, I, that's what I was asking. Yes, okay. the, the, the cap, the limitation is only For the on retail. retail. Yeah, not okay. cultivation, not manufacture, that, that's not That's what testing. I was asking, yeah. Okay. Sorry, that was a long, long answer to your okay, short no question. Okay, no problem, no <laughs> problem. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Pat, would it be proper for us to close the public hearing now, and would the board be able to ask questions of Adam? Without as long as it's not new information, right. I think that would be appropriate to do. You have all the information okay. that you uh, want or need to make your decision. You go ahead and vote. Okay. And why don't we go ahead and close the public hearing at 746. Um, anyone want to talk about any of these issues? Well, 
I do feel like, and I guess I'm just missed, I kept thinking that the five acre minimum was there. I do think that that's an important distinction for us in terms of I'm sorry, um, I didn't hear that. Five acre minimum, five acre four minimum. point okay. four six six five, the dimension and and um, whatever it's called, restrictions, dimensions, John, performance standards. Can you that, on that? Well, I know we talked about this before. So yeah, I, I mean, as, as you're aware, I think I don't see it as a fit for this town. Right. Period. Right. But if we do put it to vote and the people say, no, we, we want marijuana. Um, they have said it once before, but I, I, I think they were misinformed a little bit when they voted in the state, state election. I think everybody should have the opportunity. I mean, th therefore, right. what, what, let's, let's, as far as the, the five acres, the five acres, no, no, I think because if people say, yes, we do want it, yep. then people should have the opportunity to grow it. That's, um, okay. because otherwise what you're going to end up in, in town is a, a de facto, all, albeit legal, um, cartel. And well, I mean, there's a lot of farm land. And there are a lot of five acres. Yeah. But is, can we? Like, can we? Is this going to be a problem? Having if we if we have actually closed the meeting, and we start to change something, I mean, how much can we change here with, with no public comment? I'm concerned about that. Because yeah. if we're going to change it to five acres, maybe we shouldn't be closing the meeting. Maybe we should be. I, um, so I, um, if I could, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not concerned about the hearing being closed for purposes of changes. You can always make changes as part of your deliberations. Okay. You certainly can't request new information, which is the point that Pat made. I can provide legal counsel. I can answer questions you have about what's been drafted and potential changes. Um, I can't give you new information you didn't previously have, but you can make changes through the deliberative process, but the public has no ability to comment. If you say, we're going to change it to five acre minimum and you hear screams from the back of the room, you can't allow those individuals to come to the microphone. Well, that's what I'm asking, yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, Roger, do you have any feelings on the five acres? Probably best to have the five acre minimum, I would think. But I think that happened when the state recommended an acre and a half and we adopted or started adopting some yeah. of their policies. I remember the five acre at first. Max? Well, you know, thousand acres isn't big enough. <laughs> I, well, I, you know, when I voted for marijuana to be legalized I voted no but what I read that question it just said that marijuana was going to be regulated like alcohol not that we're going to grow it commercially we're going to sell it retail we're going to do this or that a ballot initiative you know it's taken on a life of its own right. well I, I'm just one I just with don't the five want, acres for right now we'll get right. to the other five side acres is yeah uh, five acres is key in keeping with other issue you know other uses Paul, regularity. You want to say? Um, I guess I don't. I'm, I'm either way. I don't. Does anybody want to make a motion to change that, or do you want to leave it? I'll make it a motion to change it. Um, I think. Yes, I'll make a motion that, um, you know, four six 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 five that we add um, a five acre minimum to our requirements for uh, dimensional and performance standards. One more second there. Change it for a minimum of five acres for an acre and a half? I'm just going to vote no, no matter what. One wants to second it? Um, I, right. I guess if we needed to have real good discussion on it, but uh, I'm not. Yeah, well, wait, I need to second before we discuss. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm willing to do it on that basis, but not that I'm. You don't have to vote for it if you second it. You don't have to vote right. for it. Right. All right. I'll second it just for just for discussion purposes. I'll vote for it. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Four. All those opposed? Two. Okay. So it's five. Who, who said no? Who One. Those two. Two. So it's okay. Four to two. Four. One, two, three, four, okay. five, so we'll, six. So it's four so to two. Four to four. two. Oh, four to two. I'm sorry. Okay. Two, four. Okay, so we'll recommend that uh, they change that minimum acreage from one and a half to five acres. Okay, and go back. Um, well, it, 
we then we didn't. <laughs> I said I did it for discussion purposes. Then we didn't have any more discussion. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I I, I, I think well, if the if if there was a motion in a second, okay. then the discussion should have occurred before the vote was taken. That's what right. I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> but we but talked he just about passed it. it. Yeah, that really wasn't the vote. I think that the, I think the vote oh. came came prematurely. That's because I I you said you went around and asked everybody. No, no, I know. <laughs> but I, I specified when I okay. said it yeah. that, that we should have discussion before we. Okay. Right. What would you like to discuss? <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think how much how much RA land if we put RA in there. And the and the typical size of an RA lot is sixty thousand square feet, right? That's by zoning. Yeah. It's going to be a minimum of that. So, um, how many how many areas within that zone can they actually do it? If it's every single there? house can do it. With five what, five acres? If it's oh, close no, to no, five no. acres, if it's one acre. No, no, no. If it's five acres, five acres, I don't know how many you're, five you're gonna you're gonna eliminate there. most of the RA district from that. So I wonder. No, no, no. no. Okay, you would just right. gonna be a vast you, majority. Yeah. Is yeah. there? Okay, that's what I'm it's asking. I'm just trying to. All that really would eliminate is the small. You know, you'd have to have five acres, so it would eliminate all the single-family homes that are on an acre and a half building lot from doing that. Okay. I think the IRA district is too broad, personally. Well, in this way, this is part of I know of the, it does this narrow part of what down I'm a saying little bit. It narrows it down a bit. I said I, think. I was in favor of yeah. it, but it's still too. It takes encompasses our whole community. Right. So with the with the five acre, five acre zoning in the RA, because we're kind of we're our, we're a pastoral community. I mean, that's hard to kind of we've never made that distinction. The farms it's right next to. A, Group of houses, and right. you know, so it's a it's a combination community in that regard. Anyway, so. so anyway, I feel like the five acre minimum kind of sets some one more bumper um, guard against. So so let's let's say that somebody has twenty acres in the IRA development zone, of or even ten acres in there, they they're they're or five acres even, and their their farmhouse is on that property. What happens if they want to? sell the house or they want to divide that property up and well, they've already got the thing there how do you deal with that so be it, then that's a transfer if they're going to sell it that's a transfer and we review it again it's and it is special permit so it's not like not just any five acre property is going to get it um, and we do have these setbacks i just feel like it's one more bumper it's one more uh one more Hurdle, one more jump that I think is worthy, given that the RA is pretty broad, broad discrimination. That's where I stand, and I and I don't disagree. I think that that does restrict. I think it, it is another restriction. That's what I'm I'm voting in favor for the very reason that you're you know you have concerns. It's one more restriction. All right, we'll do this again. <laughs> Are we ready? In favor? <laughs> there any more comments? Mr. Chairman, discussion. Yes. I think we need to be very clear about the modification, given that your your recommendation is going to be based upon it. So you're proposing a five acre minimum. Mm -hmm. yes. Is the five acre minimum for cultivation only? Cultivation yes. only. Is it for cultivation only in the RA district? Correct. Cultivation is Everything also will allowed. Everything will be the same. It's just it'll change it from uh, one and a half acres to the five acres. But I think we in need the RA. RA. Oh, in the RA. RA. Just in the or RA. Industrial or planned industrial. Just in the RA. That's just why we're talking RA. about it. Yes. Cultivation only, just in the RA, right. five acre minimum. So let me look back at the use table. Yes. Yeah. Because everything is special permit, so it's not like. Right. And giving the uh, the other districts that we have, it's it's bigger than that anyways. There's no small parcels. Anyways. Okay. All those in favor of changing. The size, minimum size lot in the RA district to five acres. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Two. Still four, two. Okay. Right. So we've just voted to change it. Just five we've acres. To change that. Here's in RA zone. Is there any comment or discussion about the um, the bylaws as we've reviewed them? Right. 
Anybody want to talk about anything? Uh, let's see, where did I have my question? I'm pretty comfortable that we've chewed on this a good long time. It, um, No, the motion is going to be to recommend this and forward this to the to the town to the town meeting, right? Yes. Adam, does it matter which order we were to vote on this particular these yeah. particular items right now, or no? Not with respect to the two articles that are before right. you. Okay. You need to take separate votes with respect to each, okay. and then the votes are essentially both to forward and to recommend, right? Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, Just so people understand that there's a. There's a wide divergence on the board here in favor. Of, no, no, I know, but in, in favor and against it. So we decided to, in all fairness to the town, to have both options available, and that's why we did that. Does so someone want to make a motion about moving the bylaws forward? So let's start with this one. I'll make a motion that we... Uh, it will be to put the marijuana prohibition oh. onto no, the No, we've already we're, done we're, that. No, we haven't done that. We haven't well, done that, but that's, oh, that's a separate I'd, I'd like to see if we get a, a motion to s approve and recommend the um, zoning oh. amendments. Oh, okay. okay. So oh, the board sorry, this Okay, she my threw fault. me that. My fault, okay. my fault. I gave you the wrong one. I gave her the wrong one. Oh, okay. All right, I'll move. Since I move that we, no, what's my wording? That we, that we recommend, recommend, recommend uh, the zoning no. amendment with the mod with the addition of the tonight's um, five minimum and five acre minimum, minimum in the residential agricultural. The board of selectmen. Yeah. Um, Say that again. To the board of selectmen. To the board of selectmen to put on the more to the board of selectmen. town vote. If I could just ask. Yes. So it's your number one. You're forwarding it. Yes, to the forwarding. Selectmen it. Oh, sorry, for, sorry, sorry. For purposes, but but that's distinct from making a recommendation, recommendation. to town meeting. So if you intend to do both, you can roll them into the same motion. I just want to be sure that it's yes. both the forward and to recommend. I am yes. forwarding and recommending. And then I, in addition to the five acre minimum we just discussed, you're correct. also incorporating the changes that I made to the version that you have before you tonight. We already yeah. voted the version, on that, I believe. No, we didn't. No, we so didn't. No, as we didn't. as the tonight's draft. With the addition of a five acre minimum in the residential agricultural. Um, okay, I need a clarification then on what we voted for two and zero on. That was to add to change, change to this to five draft eight. because it doesn't From include in that. that. So this draft doesn't include the five acre minimum. Okay. But I would like to forward and recommend this draft with the addition that, that we just voted on of a five acre minimum okay. in the RA district to the Board of Selectmen to put on the warrant for the town meeting. Sound in the second that? Better the second time. <laughs> Paul? <laughs> All right, I'll second it. It's, it's important that we get these bylaws oh, yeah. to go forward, regardless of what outcomes, because if we don't move these bylaws forward, you know, yes. the town could be liable. If we do nothing tonight, we don't move this forward. Right. We could have 10 places in town. You left wild wide west. open. It, wild it west left side. wide open. Yeah. You have no, no say of what's going to happen. Right. This is our opportunity to promote something that is responsible. Yes. Whether or not we prohibit or not, that is something a two-part separate, two part separate right. venture. And so we leave ourselves open without a good plan. I think we've you know, we've I put still some believe the it. whole RA district, even with the five-acre minimum, is too broad of a thing right. over our community. Oh, Pat? Pat Smith from Furcock. So just in further clarification of the nature of this motion that you're making now, typically when there's a zoning bylaw amendment that goes before town meeting, you make a report to town meeting, and I typically help you to draft that. Sure. So when you say recommend, are you recommending putting it on the warrant, or are you recommending its passage? Both. That's and, and that was the point that I was oh, making. And, and maybe you know, I'm getting a sense as to where the board lies on this, and you've got six members tonight. So 
maybe there's some sense in separating those motions because it's one thing to vote to forward it along to the selectmen and ask them to put it on the warrants. It's okay. another thing to say that you, as a board, recommend its adoption to town meeting. Okay. Right. So I, if your board was unanimous in support, you could roll it into sure. one motion. If there's a possibility that you might not get the vote even to pass it along to the selectmen, that could be problematic for the reasons that were just sure. described. So maybe you separate okay, the motion. So maybe. Why don't we, why don't you make a motion to forward, forward it to the selectmen? As amended. This evening's draft, as presented by our council, with the um, change that we voted on um, to add the five-acre minimum in the RA to the uh, select board. We are forwarding, I move that we forward this on to the select board. Someone want a second? I'll second. All those in favor of moving this are recommending this go forward to the Board of Selectmen? Aye. Hand. Aye. I will forward it to the Selectmen. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. So it looks like we're 510. Okay. Okay. Do you want to make a motion about recommending it? Okay, I do. I want to make a motion to recommend this um, this evening's draft as proposed by Council with the addition of the five acre minimum in the RA district to the Select Board for consideration on the town warrant. Are we are we recommending this to the town to the town um town meeting town meeting, town meeting. Town meeting. Town meeting. Yeah. Like this, this 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 oh I'm going straight to the town meeting. This is a, yeah. this is a favorable I recommend report. it to the town this meeting. Vote, you're saying that yes. it's favorable. I'm voting right. favorable, yes, yeah. to recommend it. One more second. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. okay. Kim got it. You, you got to get it. you get it kept. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All those opposed? Three two zero. Three three zero. Wow. Okay, so it's a mixed vote then. Okay. I don't know what we do at that point. You just report well, it as a mixed vote, I guess. Right. Okay. That's all you do. You report it as a mixed right. vote. Okay, we got it. Okay. So the last uh, item, I guess, we need to do is to talk about the uh, prohibition. The prohibition. Um, any more discussions about this? Well, just in, in are we, have we moved it? No. Oh, okay, then we should have a mo motion and then I'll tell you what I think. And, and I might recommend that we do it the same way with multiple motions, because okay. much like the other, it sure. needs to be forwarded. Okay. And then a recommendation okay. needs okay. to be made at the town meeting. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a recommendation that we vote, uh, that we forward, forward this uh, prohibition regulation to the Board of Selectmen. I'll second the motion. Those in favor? Those opposed? It's five one. Five one zero. Yeah. This is to forward. Second motion. I uh, would like to make a motion that we recommend to the voters of the town Deerfield to adopt this regulation. One, one second, motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? All those opposed? Wait, 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 sorry, what are we doing here again? Please. Rec recommending to the town. Yep. This. We accept the prohibition? We accept the prohibition, yes. Okay. I don't want to vote that. So, I, what, what was the vote? You didn't. You did. Okay, good. <laughs> so when did you lower that vote? Standing? No, no, I'm I'm voting against the prohibition. The prohibition. That's such a funny thing to do. Okay. So it's so five, two, was, four, two. Four, four, two. Four, two, four, two, two recommended and two not to. I can right. see those Correct. hands again just to, for clarity. Yes. Okay. So four, this four. is in favor, in favor of the prohibition. Of recommending the prohibition. Just, yeah. Yeah. And the hands. Oh, two I, against. It's, it's two kind deal. of a, a double edged sword. I want the people to have the option. Vote. The option. You already voted that, and so you're for <laughs> yes. it. Now, yes. now so you're now saying, saying, are you recommending that they vote in favor of the prohibition? Yes. So you recommend the prohibition. You want the prohibition to pass if you had your rather no. This is what you're saying. Oh, he's recommending. It's too late. You voted. I already voted. Okay, so is it four two zero, right? Yep. Okay. That's, that's about it. That's it. Anything else we need to talk about? about that? All right, Adam. I think so. We're all set. Thanks for 
Many yeah, meetings. Thank you. Thanks for putting up. I have to say that was, it was a little tricky. Yeah, it was tricky. I'm not, yeah, that's just I'm not supporting. Adam, can we document your time for the last four or five minutes? I just think you want to. <laughs> no, okay. maybe that can go on the. Uh, <laughs> legally, it should be able to, right? Oh, in the host community it agreement? It was a cost occurred. <laughs> it's talking. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you. And should be pretty Thank, Thank you, Adam. Sure. While we're doing it, this was not on the agenda, but we normally do do it. Yeah, the minutes. Minutes. The minutes. Do you want to do the minutes from last? Uh, sure. Has everybody let me read these minutes? Uh, yeah, mostly. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I was at this meeting. <laughs> uh, well, does it say your name at the top? Yes, no, I was. I just can't remember. Oh, yeah, that, that's just the meeting. Stupid. What did we vote? Sorry. Seven zero zero. Everybody was there. I do remember now. I do remember. Ooh, no, I was there. there. I was there. What's that? She was there. Everybody was there yep. for that meeting. Yeah. I'm teasing. I remember King Philip. I even looked it up. I went and looked at the place. Did we vote to support the request for a town planner? We didn't, yes. right? Oh, we did. I thought we did. I, I thought we did too. I don't so. look and see. I don't I think we voted. I think we may not she have. asked us to support it. I think that's no, right. We did, we did not. And vote. I we did not. Right? not vote. We didn't vote. No, it was done right at the end of the so. meeting, and there was no vote. Okay. Yeah. So it was kind of like, would you just say that you liked it? Okay. Oh, we voted on this already, though. What's that? We voted on. We're looking at the minutes. It looks like the last vote was the same vote we just had. Let's see. Let's grab a set of the minutes here. Except the bottom. Well, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes, and then we can have okay. a discussion. I'll second, second it. All those in favor? No, we were. Aye. Oh, no, it was discussion. Oh, okay. Did we just dis accept did it, them? Did you have discussion? Any discussion? <laughs> I'm a, uh, I mean, I, I, think I was just, I okay. think it's fine, too. It's good. I just wanted to move it on. <laughs> good. Okay. Boom. Who, who moved it, by the way? John. John did. John, Rachel who seconded second it? Me. Okay. okay, and Rachel. And were there any changes? No. I didn't okay. see any, other than Pat's name should be Six capitalized. Zero, zero. Okay. I don't know. I too many papers here. I lost my agenda here. Yeah, I took it. Oh, you took it. Oh, okay. This was mine, but oh, this oh, okay. discussion of the um, fence was mine. No, I just got a new business plan board. All right. I don't think we got him here. He's not. Who's uh, that? This I don't have the agenda. Do you have the, the agenda? The, the Ugh, um, I have inspector. it here. I just. Do you want? I, I think he's going. No, I got it. I know I have it on my phone too. So I think we just leave until next meeting. Here we go. Well, we can talk about it. Okay. All right. Yes. So last meeting we um, last meeting we uh, talked about you know move, go, going forward with some of the stuff recommendations and I think we talked about maybe talking about the um, in the that's in the, with the time frame that we have tonight talking about the uh, accessory apartments yep. and yes at that just yes. for you know, okay because it's I mean I think it, all the other stuff deserves a lot of discussion that's it. right okay uh, well do you um, table that you want to table it John well we're, we're going to talk about it's, the accessory apartments I, I believe that's what we discussed towards right. the end of last meeting right and, Kyle's know, maybe proposal. we can move on that or maybe not before the well, well, well there's also we're supposed to to right we're, we're going to table that until we can table some I think uh, well, why don't, let's talk about the accessory apartments I mean bylaw amendments was too long to address right. between now sure. but that because previous work had been done on the accessory apartment bylaw that might be something to consider here right. tonight right so I did bring for you that draft bylaw amendment that had been prepared through the work of the planning board back in 2014 and this is as a result of the zoning recommendations in the housing production plans yeah that I also was have part of that. recommendations for you it's been a long time since 2014 
So this would Thank be you. the draft. This would be where we could start. Where we could start. Um, as has been noted by the building commissioners, the uh, accessory apartment bylaw, and as we discussed back in 2014, is very restrictive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unusually so. Mm -hmm. So you will see as you look at this that there's some initial recommendations for um, different ways to expand housing in the community, mm -hmm. different areas in your uh, districts. And then you turn, I believe, on page three, it begins the changes, the accessory apartment bylaw, mm -hmm. which there's more taken out than put it. Yeah. There's right. a lot of red line there. So I saw it. You did this, Pat? You, this you, was you made this? Uh, by mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. consultation with okay. the planning board back in 2014. Ultimately, there was a, a determination made not for to proceed with any zoning changes at that point in time. Let me ask you a question about this. I mean, her name? this cannot go on the town meeting more. No, no. At this point. I, I think the anticipation was to have this discussion in hopes of being able to do that. I Would this have, have to go in front of public? That's for a public hearing. Public hearing. Yeah. Have another public hearing. Yeah. As you can see, it's a pretty Tight. complicated Tight. recommendation, and <laughs> just judging of the amount. Discussion you had about this one zoning bylaw amendment that's just now going forward. I would have caution about whether you are going to be ready to do this. Yeah, it would require multiple. That's my question. Yeah, we we don't want to rush any of this stuff. Yeah. No, but I, you know, looking at I I've looked at this the the housing strategy before and. I keep seeing the same thing over, and I, and I know that this board has had its differences as far as two-family houses, but if you look at all of these regulations that uh, Pat made, you know, there's, there's a lot of work that goes into it. I'm not going to say they're complicated, but there's a lot of things that need to go through it. And in our own zoning bylaws, it's even that much more. And I, I just feel that if we made it as simple as allowing two-family houses, you can do away with all of this. You know, because that way if somebody has a house, a single family house, and they want to make a mother-in-law apartment, then they can do it because they're just making it into a duplex. Then if the parent passes away, they don't have to disassemble it. They've, it's still a two family house. You so know, if I, I may, Mr. I Chairman, know. go ahead. there are distinctions in the definitions of a duplex and an accessory apartment. Right. And you might want to retain those distinctions. So for example, an accessory apartment bylaw typically requires that the accessory apartment be in encapsulated within the existing building, right. that there be no changes to the outside that make it look like it has two entrances. Entrances need to be on the back, parking around. Right. So the idea is that it still re retains the appearance of a single family dwelling. Right. Duplex is very different. Right. And people might support one more than the other, might find that there are places where one might be more appropriate than the other. So it, it seems like it's a simple thing to say just, okay, duplexes are allowed, but that, that doesn't cover all of the bases. I, and, and I get that, but the, the thing is, take the, cent, uh, the Central Village District. You know, people don't have the room where they're gonna, you know, blow up their house, you know, really big. Uh, they would probably do as you said. They would, you know, maybe put an entrance off to the side or put a, one room on something like that. But it still would be just a two-family house. The way it is now, it makes it very difficult, not only for people who want to expand their house, but it's difficult for, you know, um, the building department to, to guide them through all of this yeah. stuff. Yeah, you know? the, the and current then if, bylaw. Yeah, yes. and then if somebody, if the initial reason changes, uh, it's usually by the passing of a relative or something like that. Now, what do you do with it? You know, then you spend a lot of money to change it back. And yeah, but I don't the, know. the point being that that is still different from the accessory apartment. Still different from a duplex. So you're kind of still making the case for an accessory apartment without actually making a better case but for duplexes. duplexes. Well, I, I mean, you I know, think there's a I think there's room for duplexes. And if you see in this on this yep. first page in the use table right. um, after our discussion we were recommending that yep. um, more could be allowed in other parts of, of town with a special permit than, than uh, currently are allowed but accessory apartments uh, still you know they are often limited to a certain uh, square footage or percentage of the existing square footage so they are a smaller component than would typically a duplex you know would be divided half and half yeah. Uh, so there it are some distinctions. So I think there are two things that can work in, con you know, together in complementary fashion, but each meets a slightly different need in the community. Well, yeah, the, 
the way I look at it, Pat, is four years ago, we're, we're in, in, in bigger challenging times than we were four years ago. A lot of these young men and women are coming out of college. They can't get jobs they're, or, you know, low paying jobs. And they really don't have a choice but to stay with mom and dad. Um, on the other side, uh, towards the end of life, you've got, you know, moms and dads that don't necessarily require um, assisted care, but you know what? Maybe they don't need to live in their own house anymore and they mm -hmm. want to be with, you know, so I, I've sort of watched this happen and have become a little bit empathetic towards it. Um, and I just think it's a it's a good tool. I mean, to keep families together. And I, I, I you know, can there be abuse? Absolutely. Right. I mean, that's that's I think Given. back in 2014. That's probably the way I felt, and I still feel there could be abuse. But just because there could be abuse, does that you know? Then you have an enforcement issue. Does that mean you don't allow everyone right. to not right. do it because of that potential? Right. And, I, and you know, when you when you have a chance to look over this, you'll see that this is this these changes are designed to provide more housing options in more areas of town and to make accessory apartments easier to be approved and to be constructed. That's the intent here. What about our audience? What do they think? You're here all the time now, actually. She's our watchdog. Yeah, I know. I was going to give you the sign um, sign regulations if you want. No, the. Sign, sign, Annalise. Okay, so you will see when you get on to page five, there is an area that is both redlined and highlighted in yellow. That is language that was there for you. It was highlighted so you could think about it because there was considerable page five? discussion on page five of the, the zoning for housing. It's item V oh. in the middle of the page yep. that's five. highlighted. Um, so there's a lot of discussion about affordability. There's affordability and there's affordability. There's the legal standard from the federal and state governments, right? Yeah, which is not affordable, but it, they're calling it affordable. See, I think and, and the town, the reason why the housing production plan was done and why a number of these changes are being proposed is for the town to show to progress towards meeting its 10% affordable housing yeah. requirement yeah. so as to inoculate you against a, uh, unfriendly housing an development. unfriendly 40B development coming in here. When you do not make that 10% requirement, you are subject potentially to somebody yeah. coming in under 40B or, and doing, but, getting a or moving toward it. I, I, think, I personally feel that if this is, if this is truly um, an accessory apartment, you're never going to meet the, the state standard but that, for affordable housing. So that's, why, so that's why this really is highlighted. So the two things are two, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care two for that answers. So, so you can, you can hey, require that, that it meet those requirements and that can help you then re no, meet your 10%. No, I, or I was, you could determine that you do not want to make that requirement and that's why we had highlighted this because that seemed but, to be a point no, of contention I, that I, the committee was going to want to discuss. I asked the question during that because I was highly involved in that. This. And the, the thing is that you have to totally remodel the whole house and you have to meet all the state standards right. in order to be counted as affordable right. housing. Right. No, but so, you're, you're, so we're not we're not we're not going to have that conversation because okay. Let me because just, if you don't want to do that, that's fine, and you could leave that out. But it would you would need to understand that the, that any accessory apartments that were built and utilized in town would meet your social goals, but would not meet your goal of the 10 percent affordability requirement of the state. Let me shed a little light on this. And okay. You talk about all the things. The big thing that you guys haven't mentioned. The only way that you can get any of these, you can have apartments and rent them for $10 a month. It still will not meet, meet the, the requirements. state requirements yeah. until you put a deed restriction on your deed your property. Uh, and and they that's have to, what they people have to don't want to do. That, and they, yes. even if the people accepted that, then the state won't accept it because it has to be, it has to be to a standard that the state. I, I guess it, 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 I think that's the thing. That's, it's, it's better than any of us live. I know it. I know it. <laughs> But, you, but it's, really it's the deed restriction the that meeting. really is a big kicker. Yeah. You, with that deed restriction, yes, if you do that and you go to house and I want to buy it, I can buy it, but I have to live you with have, those restrictions. Yeah, it's like a 20 year deal. So, and that's why a lot of people won't do that. Yeah. And, and yeah. That's, the, that's the biggest so, reason. Yeah. So, we, you know, this yeah. was a point of contention. Sure. Yeah. That's why I, it's I highlighted here in such a way as to provide for that discussion. If somebody comes in and makes a project that. Where does everybody go? Yeah, some of the accessory apartments don't isn't, it, them. isn't it odd how for the past five meetings we had a packed house and 
So they didn't come for our so, charming good looks, I guess. I, you know, there's a lot he, to chew over here, yeah. even for those of you that participated in the discussion four years ago. I'm happy to, you know, assist you with this, and we can look at the other zoning bylaw amendments as well. I think you would need to decide tonight whether you were ready to proceed. Uh, well, I don't think we would be ready to decide tonight on this, but at I'm least we're, we're bringing it forward. Yeah, I okay. think we're thinking about it, considering it. Um, I think it's something we, we've talked about before, worth talking about again, uh, looking at what our neighbor towns have done, um, what kind of impact it's had. I think that that's something we, Greenfield's, you know, moving yes, with had it. a particular experience. Their experience years. is something that's worth considering mm -hmm. studying a little bit on our part just because they've gone first. And so good. And the new building commissioner has himself put together some, and some Kyle is engaged. Uh, recommendations yep. that, uh, you know, I because we hadn't begun on this, I hadn't started to do any work to uh, see how his recommendations right. correlate to these and putting those all together. Well, so I was right. looking forward to asking him, the town has, has 15 or 20 storage units around the whole town at their different offices. Would they be outlawed at that point? Storage units? I'm We're sorry. not talking about that tonight. We're just talking about accessory apartments right storage. now. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> did I say storage? We're, 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 we're I misspoke when I said storage. Until it's no, no, we're talking about... Oh. Uh, yeah, I know, about. but we're yeah, we're talking about right. we're talking about one and two family homes. No, no, we've moved on. She started talking. No, I'm sorry, about I didn't. Business. If I if I said storage, I misspoke. I, I no, was no, still no. referring Paul, to I think accessory. We discuss. Apartments. We're gonna we're gonna work on one item at a time. That's good. And That's fine. I agree with that. Let's just let's just hold this and work on this, and then we'll go back and do the others later, because well, he had made a recommendation about this as well. That may have been your yeah you confusion. Said you were, you were he had spoken. He his recommendations. And, and on accessory apartments. That's, and you said story, No, but that's anyway. Okay. All right, let it go. So if um, you want me to start working and uh, putting his recommendations together with this for another meeting coming up, I can do that. Or if you just want to hold off for a while and figure out when and how you want to proceed on that, that is fine as well. Well, is that my, my thought is let's work on one thing at a time and just move down the list as we go. Okay. Yeah. Do you want I me to start working on this accessory apartment bylaw and well, putting I, together I, Kyle's recommendations with these from I'd, earlier? I'd like to know why he came up with this list. What spurred these? So maybe you need to have him come and make a presentation. I think that's, and well, then yeah, we I would like to know that I think also. That why before we do that with you, I think before we set sure. you to that, I think it would be good for us to hear from Kyle. He put a good bit that's of work right. into that's that. Exactly yeah. Right. yeah. And I, I think that, makes that sense. Um, He's yeah. going to be the enforcing body. Right. He's yeah. the one. I assume got, he's he's brought it forth because he was of here issues tonight. with enforcement. Yeah, and yes. then he had to leave. So I think. Yeah, maybe we can put it on the agenda for him sometime at the beginning of the meeting when he can actually be right. here and we can have. There's time. Okay. Enough. Now, are we going to have him break it down and do one at a time, or come in and do the whole thing at once? No, no. We're, uh, just <laughs> accessory apartments. Just okay. I vote for just accessory apartments, and then. If he wants to bring forward another well, one at another meeting, that's his other. It all depends how long the presentation is going to be. Why? What spurred this I, list? I don't I think, think he's going to. I don't think it's. Well, it was just people ask him. Well, he yeah. could go through the list then. I guess that wouldn't be a big deal. No. It, you know. Okay, this is why I felt yeah. this. This is why. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then that way, you guys you determine what your priorities might it's be for how you would right. address. All right. That. I can agree to mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. And that way, he doesn't have to come. He doesn't have to come about five times. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Duplexes. Call them condos, but they're seventy-two duplexes. Well, that's you know looking it's through this thing them. about the but size. That's why I, I I just I mean, don't. Why not? I know. I, I know another another part. Yeah, but you've got a single owner. That's no. the thing. You have. Uh, in, well, you, I'm just saying. I, uh, you just I'll, yes, we, you exactly. just approved 72 duplexes. You're right. Well, but, but it's not just. But about they're, 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 people. It's a why not let other people management? You, other you end up yeah. with. You've got one manager. Not. You can't do that. It's 35 managers outside the center village district. Correct. Right. And maybe maybe so, if our zoning is flawed. Maybe we shouldn't allow it in the Center Village District. Shouldn't. Kip, is there any talk ever about expansion of the sewer system? There's a lot of talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, why you laugh? I mean, well, I, just, I, just, we, I just don't. Maybe the sewer district is not. The it's, sewer district is. <laughs> there is a lot of talk about it, but it's very expensive. You know, in today's day, it's it's outrageously expensive. And we have current And issues. we have to deal with the, the current. At least I believe that we need to fix one problem at a time. That's what happened before. They took on this big project, spent a lot of money for papers, and they did nothing. So we're, we're uh, okay. I think we're going to go forward with uh, working in the South Deerfield plant and see how that all works and then move to Old Deerfield. And, uh, 
Yeah, there is a lot of questions that need to be answered. Whether you you put that one, take that one offline, and pump it into. Well, I don't think that. I mean, yeah, it was it was going to be. Like I, I, Roger, I'm asking questions. I, I mean, know. I, I'm, I, just, I'm just saying. I know that was a proposal. I'm just laughing. I can laugh. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying your your well, question yeah. is not. It's a good question. Justifiable, but. Well, maybe if we get that million dollars a year from the pot, we could, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> 35 million, <laughs> whatever. But, you know, it was going to be, tw it's, I think it was going to be 20, almost $20 million to pump from. Oh, really? Delivery. That costly? Yeah. 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 It, there's, it, there's it, no it needed like around. five pump stations. Oh. I was going to say, how far is it going to go? And then, you know, then not only the paying for that infrastructure, but to run all of those lift stations, you know, could cost in excess of. Five hundred thousand dollars. What if we so went the other direction? The number of people that use them in Old Deerfield, I mean, it would be astronomical. I mean, the technology must be much better today than it was forty or fifty years ago when these plants were built. Is I mean, what, has any? I mean, what about like just smashing that one right in and building something smaller? <laughs> we are it's, it's, just, it's very expensive. It's, yeah. it's just very. I mean, you know, we're we're probably looking at close to two million dollars just to make the. Um, Upgrades to the South Deerfield plant. It was going to be, you know, almost four million dollars, and there's only 600 families that use that plant. So it's down it's, down there. The South Deerfield. This plant. one here. Yeah. 600. That's it, that's huh? It. Oh, and, and and if you take you take away Eagle Brook and the Academy, you've only got 16 people that use the old Deerfield one. Eagle Brook is on that sewer system. Yeah. Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah. It's primarily the academy that's in historic Deerfield. So there's no problem with head pressure going <laughs> off of that mountainside, is it? Gravity. No, it just. Yeah. Down just so I can put something in the minutes, are we going to table the housing strategies and the building inspectors' uh, recommendations to a next meeting or to. I, to I guess. Oh. I guess we can. Our next I mean, I'm, you know, you know. Yes, let's invite Kyle to our next, next meeting. meeting. Next we can do that. That's right. the 2nd of April. 2nd of April. Okay. It's already been set. Let's ask yep. him and then. We'll, we'll then at that point have a clear understanding of how we want to proceed. Yeah, wait a minute. This isn't what... our April meeting. No. no. This no. is an extra meeting for We've the public hearing. We've been meeting too much. Yeah. That's why I thought it, the so March. Meeting another couple I thought we were. See, last yeah. meeting so anyway, we set the next second week. of it's April next week. the next meeting. And so if we have him come and we and he and talks us through what where his priorities yeah. lay, where, what he sees as... You know, rising to the top. And is that a holiday? I just want to make sure. Uh, next it is a holiday, so you have to have a different day. Next Monday, the 2nd, right. our Point. meeting is at 7 o'clock. No, the 16th is a holiday. We all make mistakes. So I've, done, Easter, I've done that the before. First, so like, Easter's Easter Sunday. 7. Let's make it at 7. Huh? Okay, I don't so think it was too many meetings ago. It was 6, and I got a call, and I said, oh, be right down. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, what do we got for the next meeting? Well, I we just want to say Max and I were okay. here first, and actually Max was here first, but we were here. You guys get bored. Max was holding hey, court some... here by himself for a while. Uh, exactly. Yeah. It's just I, I know it does. I don't get to carry those minutes forward when I'm late, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of hoped. So yeah, I mean, it, hopefully we'll have a quiet period where we can get some have some discussion more study. on it because yeah. this right. is what always happens yeah. we end up with an issue like this you know and last year it was um sugarloaf uh, yeah. you know so never, and, Cumberland, and Cumberland farms and there was a whole and the self storage right. very yeah. easy year last yeah. year yeah. and uh, you know we're all volunteers you know and, yeah so seven o'clock april 2nd kyle's coming yeah. can i just right. yes yep i'll talk with him thank you um with that said, I mean, we voted on the minutes. Is uh, I don't think because we're not in a monthly meeting, we don't need to worry about mail. Yeah. So uh, I'll make a motion, motion that we close the meeting. Okay. Till April When's our next meeting? I it's second, second, second it. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, Rachel, you second Seven. it? Seven. Yes, yes, I did.